Hi, I'm Tom. I'm Matty. And I'm Lewis. This is the Wigan Way, Wigan's favourite rugby league podcast. Wigan Way podcast is brought to you by Cherry and White Pins, a local Wigan Warriors themed pin badge company with a variety of Wigan ranges. You can get free shipping on all orders when you use the code THE Wigan Way, that's THE Wigan Way, all in capitals, at checkout. Thanks to them for supporting the show. So we're back, and it's a special end of, uh, end of the season. It's the review of one big game. We're not doing a big season deep dive, but we've won the Grand Slam. We've won all four trophies. There was talk of it at the start of the season on this table court, genuinely, that, that you would win all, we could win all four, and we've done it. I know we're going to focus on the Grand Final, but lads, what a few couple of days this has been. We're, we're recording on the Tuesday, three, three days, four days after the, after the Grand Final. Like, lads, how are you doing? Matty, how are you doing, mate? Oh, fa- absolutely fantastic! Still on cloud nine. Um, to do all four, and to stop your rivals winning anything, and and this this team is special. And I said last week they deserve it. They do. This team uh, has really been incredible all year. They've been by far the best team, undisputed champions, world club champions, Challenge Cup winners. To do all four, peak three times in a season. I've never seen anything like it. That's it. Peaking four times, it's such a, a difficult thing to do because I remember talking to us, I can't remember when I said it in the podcast, but there was a bit of worry that maybe we'd peaked after the cup and like we were struggling in, in a bit of a slump. How do you win so many games that you need to do to, to do what we've done? Um, but before we get into all them details, and we'll probably talk about the, the season as a whole in another episode, but Lewis, how you doing, mate? Yeah, all good, mate. All like, like similar things to what you boys have just said. Absolutely ecstatic with the win to do the Grand Slam, to do all four. Uh, really enjoyed the day. I think I said on the previous episode, I've actually only ever done one. My last Grand Final was actually 2010. Mm. So to go back to Old Trafford, obviously I've been to Wembley, um, went to Tottenham. No, oh, you went uh, last year, didn't you? Sorry? Did you go last year? Yes, yeah, so I've, I've, done, I've, done, I've done Wembley, but to get back to Old Trafford yeah, for a yeah. Grand Final. Like, it was a holiday last year. Final, oh, was, I was pretty special and I really enjoyed it. Mm. So it was good. It was really good. I had a sore head on Sunday, <laughs> uh, but we're all recovered now and I'm back on the high. So what do you make of of Old Trafford then? As a as a venue for me, it's still incredible. I get there's lots of problems with it. There's lots and lots of problems with it. It but was I, leaking in front of us. It was leaking. Yeah, I did get dripped on a few times because I was further forward than you, it, and. The in goal area is terrible and the pitch is too narrow, which doesn't lead to great attacking play. But walking up some Mount Bosby Way and you've got Old Trafford in front of you, and oh, it's, it is a special place. And if they can, I know they seem to want to keep it there so that when it, it's it redeveloped. 20, 27? Yeah, and I think that's about the time where it's going to be redeveloped. So I think they want to keep it there long term. Mm. I don't I don't know. I, I, I love Old Trafford. I do think, though, the problems. We saw the problems again this time. But 68,500 people, where else are they going to go? This is the thing, you can't. You need it, I, th- I still think, up north. Yeah. I, I don't think, when Blaze the Challenge Cup, I think if he was to move it down there, I think it'd take a little bit away from the Challenge mm. Cup final. That needs to kind of to keep its own thing for me. I agree. And you think about iconic stadiums in the north, it's Old Trafford, that kind of comes to your mind, really, isn't it? Do you not think it's got the same feeling that? Like our parents talk about the old Wembley has, because I go and when I see Old Trafford, even if I've walked past it for a football match or I've walked past it going towards the cricket ground or whatever, yeah. I always think October Grand Final. Yeah. And I, I, I'm not a Man United fan, so I don't have the same affiliation to it with the football. No. But I watch it and I walk up to it. And I'm going, it's Grand Final time. And I, I went watching a concert at the, at the cricket ground a few months back, and when we were walking, we walked past Old Trafford, and I just went October. <laughs> I hope I'm back here in October. October the 12th will get me back in there. And it's just, 
it's so iconic that I don't think you could move it. I don't think it can be anywhere else. No. I don't want it to be anywhere no, else. No, I don't either. I don't. And, and they do need to sort out the the obvious problems. Mm. And you talk about Wembley, as good as going to Tottenham was that year, it wasn't Wembley. No. No. If that Tottenham Stadium was in Manchester and it was on the site of Old Trafford, maybe. You know how good it is. Mm. But you can't take the Challenge Cup away from Wembley. No. And you definitely can't take, I don't think you can, you can take the grand final away from Manchester. No. I hear what people are talking about with the Etihad. But I still think Old Trafford is synonymous with the grand final, isn't it? Magic weekend at the Etihad. Oh, absolutely. Have it there. And then go, if, if it got big, you know, immediately, World Club Challenge. Immediately, though, the talk is they're in Manchester for the Etihad, at the Etihad at Magic. They're all in the cross the city next time yeah, in October. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, you've already got a story built up there. But yeah. Old Trafford, it just, it just sits with me about. It's, it it was so good to see it full. I know we went yeah, last year and it wasn't yeah. quite as... It, it felt really full, up, apart from the very bit at the very top. But even that was quite full. The, it so wasn't full. To our that. left, um, it was right at the top, it wasn't full. Mm. But everywhere else was rammed. The Wigan end was rammed. The whole care end was rammed. Plenty of neutrals. It was just good to see it full. It was, yeah. And I think, actually, this has had more hype than a grand final I can remember. Mm. For a long time. It's had a lot of hype, hasn't it? It was advertised a lot in and around the area and through the northwest. People have been talking about it more. I think the big reason for that has been there's been a narrative playing out, hasn't there? You know, Wigan has built this strong team, they've won the three, can they do it all for Hull KR? A lot of comeback story they've had from, you know, what we've talked about this in the last episode. Not that long ago, really, since being relegated and they've made their first grand final, you know, mm. can are they the team to kind of cement themselves a new name on the trophy besides the four who's won it? And they did really well, I think, the Super League, the marketing, the pundits on Sky Sports, and ever to really build this up and build a narrative to, for people to invest mm. in it, really. The playoffs have been great, really great. Yeah. yeah. I think the top few teams have had great English players and great foreign players, and the youngsters have done great all year. So I think there's been a lot of buzz around Rugby League Yeah. this year. They've got some real superstars to market the game on as mm. well. Obviously, Bevan French strings to mind, and it was Mikey Lewis for OKR, who was the kind of obvious name for them. We've got superstars in the game as well who can mm. be marketed. Do you know what I mean? That Bevan French try should be shown, which we'll get on to in a minute, but it should be shown. Junior has to become the next big thing. That's what I mean, I yeah. I think he they, already they is. They've, they've got, and you've got superstars to market your game around. You know. Oh. You had George Williams the England captain, superstar. So close to making the final himself. He was the, you know, he was on commentary. He was referencing, he, I thought he was quite good on commentary. Yeah, no. Well, analyst he was, wasn't he? I thought he was quite smart. You had Sam Tompkins, like a legend of the game, just coming towards the end of his career, or the third end of his career, whatever you want to call it, but has been to five grand finals. Yeah. Uh, you had John Wilkin, who'd been to plenty of grand finals there as well himself. And, and so it genuinely felt important. It felt, imp- it felt important. They were dressed like it was important. Yeah. Mm. Do you think any of that extra buzz came from the fact that it was a new team though, who were experiencing it for the first time. Well, we've had new teams experiencing it for the first time before, and it's not been like this. But do you not think there was a bit of a buzz like, for example, when Castleford got there in 17? Yeah, there was. But that and was the, sort There was of... a similar narrative there with Leeds. You know, obviously Leeds were in the Wigan role yeah. in that occasion, and, and Cass were in the Hull KR role. So there was a bit of a similar buzz, and that obviously drew a big crowd as well, that one. Mm. Oh, so there was a bit of thing that tampered, uh, not tampered, that was the word I'm looking for. Hampered. Hampered. Tampered. What the yeah, with the whole um, with the heartache thing, and he was suspended before the final. We didn't really have that this time. Nothing went wrong before this. No. Really. Even though like, there was no one banned. No. Minchella came back, Farrell came Farrell back. Came back yeah. Do you think that's ever happened before, by the way? That both captains... Missed the semi finals and then both played the final. I, I doubt that's ever happened. I doubt I mean, that's ever happened. Before. Or Lachlan was captain for a long time and it felt like he got. But he played in semi finals, it felt like, didn't yeah, it? Yeah. He just came back for the playoffs and mm. Challenge Cup semi final. Mm. Then missed four weeks and played in final. Yeah, that's what it felt like. But I, I thought about that and that you probably haven't seen that before. Right, let's, let's get into it then. In the ground, mm. full crowd. They're pretty full, obviously, not, not a complete sellout, but. Close though. Very, very close. A um, couple of thousand away, wasn't it? I think it was a couple, yeah. 70 is the limit. Yeah. And their stage and their big screen. 
70's the limit and we had what 68 mm. I think 68, I think 68. Yeah. yeah Um, the Lathams were on mm. pre-match how are your nerves well they calmed it down Lathams I was properly nervous and then they came on the Lathams one of my favourite bands played five or six songs I thought I was getting a free concert here singing along there were some lads from St Jude's behind me singing along thought hey brilliant this Lathams have calmed me right down I'm just at a concert for one of my favourite bands at Old Trafford brilliant stadium and then they finished and I thought oh I was a lot more nervous before they started singing mm. so yeah I was different I said last week my nerves happen as soon as I see the stadium as soon as I go in I can't really I don't know I feel like that's actually the most anticipating thing whenever you take your seat I'm just a bit like right can, can I stop waiting now can we blow the whistle and get the game on the way please <laughs> like that actual wait before it I was part of the day, I was finding the coach heading into Manchester, I was finding the railway club before it, having a couple of booze and we were singing songs and I was just <laughs> enjoying it, but I wasn't necessarily nervous. And as soon as I took that seat and I found out where I sat, I sat down and looked at the pitch, I was a bit like, right, come on, we need to get this game yeah. underway now. And Got a job started to, do. to uh, It started to hit home, there was a game to be played here, you're not just on a day out, it's there's, there's serious business that needs taken care of. Mm. And I, I know we've said it so many times, but I was completely the other way. Mm. at like quarter past four in the railway club I'm sat updating Twitter like let's hope they release the team slightly early well did, did, did you two hear a, a vicious rumour about the Iron Man big sexy Patrick Magon potentially not playing the, I, oh, I, heard, I, heard, I heard that I heard that um, rumour that Walters about, was going to be on the bench about instead. two o'clock Walters was going to be on the bench because Mago had caught Farrell's virus now my worry there wasn't that Mago was out although he is a fine player because I thought Walters can fill in my worry was what if he's passed it to everyone yeah. and everyone's you know off colour? Yeah. Even yeah. if they're just ten percent off colour. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I never got a reason, but I was I was sat there like getting nervous, whatever. And as soon as I saw the team, I was fine. But what is it about finals? You always get into the ground a bit earlier, and you're waiting a little bit longer. Yeah. And I was ready to go. Well, we kicked off late as well. We kicked off late, and then the five minutes before the teams walked out. I just I lost myself. Well, that's when I was singing then, I guess. No, no. Oh, so they, they were going. Latham's Jerusalem. I, I don't remember a word. I don't remember Jerusalem. You know, <laughs> sitting stirring forward like, why are they not walking out now? Well, an anthem Jerusalem is better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. It was having a debate. Going. Should it be national anthem? I don't know, but yes. I don't. Know I would. Yeah, I, I love it. I'm I love it. Fan of it. Yeah, it, it is a great anthem. But yeah, no, I know what you mean. Though. So, it's, and I do think I think you've got to get to the ground early for a fan. You've got to soak up that mm. atmosphere. You know, mm. you, you you can't take them for granted. No, no, definitely. you know, you've got to enjoy every single one that comes your way if you're lucky enough to go. And you've got to yeah. get in there early, soak it up, sing the songs, get with your fans, and talk to those people you sat around next to and enjoy it. You have got to soak it up. I think mm, definitely. I agree. So, team team news. Obviously, there was no real. Shocks or surprises. Farrell came back in for Walters. That was the big thing, wasn't it? Um, Is Farrell going to play or not? Mm. Was. Um, the whole KR side was pretty much as we expected. Obviously, Gilly wasn't even in the 21s. It was exactly as we expected both sides. What we what we called out on Wednesday or Thursday, whenever we did it, once we'd seen the squads, it was exactly how we thought it would be, right down to the you know the extended bench and, and the 18th men. So I, I do think that the squads picked themselves mm. based on who got you there. You know, Mm. And we, when we put our predicted lineup out, there were a few people that disagreed, mm. and said maybe that Liam Byrne shouldn't be playing, or maybe even Avas Miski shouldn't be playing. Um, and and I think you, first of all, you got to stick with the side that's got you there because they've got you there for a reason. That's the best side in the comp. That's yeah. your best seventeen. But I also, I think somebody like Byrne is massively underrated. And I think Miski is. Mm. I mean, we'll talk a bit more about the game, obviously, because we've been going 13 minutes and we've not kicked off yet, but... Who cares? Miski, Miski was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Miski was really good. And he got us out of jail so many times. He stopped Ryan Hall and they threw him in. Yeah, him but not... Like, you know, not I, don't, but they threw him, I think we got it all about him and picked it up. But. I don't even mean just defensively, Lewis. I mean, how many times did he bring us out of yardage? Yeah, yeah, it was just does. tough carries. And I, I want to talk about the other guy that you just said, Liam Byrne. Yeah. <sighs> First of all, I was so chuffed for him. Obviously, he missed out on the grand final last year. I don't think he's ever played one. Well, or ever won one. D- he's never won one. I don't think he's played one. Um, I can't remember. Did he play in twenty twenty? That's what I was just thinking. I don't. I don't think he did. Oh, well, 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 I think sorry. Lockers came back. But obviously, in twenty twenty three, he carried our pack for a large mm. portion or whatever, and he was severely like 
a lot of fans really ripped into him and I never understood it. He was single-handedly carrying our pack and then Dupree came in and... May go up his game, didn't May go up his game. Well, Matty Pete come out and said he was playing busted on painkiller yeah. injections, didn't he? And but, I think then a lot of people went on, oh, actually. But he, he was the one that, that missed out, really. And you think, if we'd have got there, I'd have loved them. When you're looking at the season, May, um, Byrne would have been the one to get us to that grand final. Now, obviously, he couldn't do it all the way, but he did a large portion. He won, won a lot of games off the back of Liam Byrne. And then the magic of French and Smith. He's, to- he's totally different to every other prop forward we've got in the squad. Well, exactly. maybe not in the squad, but in that lineup yes, yeah. uh, on Saturday. Yeah. But he what, is just. And he got called into action early. Yeah. Well, this was what I was going to say. Just, just, just direct. Hmm. Just be direct. Burn, just do your job, be direct. I Don't saw, do anything fancy, just be direct. I saw a lot of people saying about having maybe Eckersley on the bench because he gives you cover for the centre and the wingers no, or whatever. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I still do not believe you can. Have a bench which has Mago and one other prop on it because Mago is not effective at doing the long minutes. Mago's your fifth prop. We've, yeah, we've had we have and talked about that. This is exactly why because December went off, we didn't know what was going to happen, and I went, We've got 50 60 minutes of Liam Byrne just being steady. Mm. And I was, I was confident we didn't actually need that many minutes, but if we needed to do, give 50 yeah. minutes to Byrne, we would have been fine. Yeah. You know and, what that, I mean? and that's what he brings that air of confidence you know you can get 70-80 out of Cade Ellis out of Luke Thompson Ethan Havard mm. Dupree you can get probably 40 out of Mago effectively you don't want to be playing in more than 30 minutes you're getting a good 25 so having Burn there someone who's able to just be a steady or a very good 14 a very good 14 <laughs> uh, but Burn just gives you so much confidence and control you, if someone goes down in the first minute, you're all right. Mm. You're not panicking and asking someone to do a spell that they can't do. No, and and, and I was, I was pleased. Luke, Luke Thompson settled into the left second row mm. without blinking, mm. and then just rotated back to prop as soon as Ensemble came back yeah. on. Yeah. Le, uh, Thompson came off for four minutes, and then came back on yeah. the whole game. Four minutes. Big game. K turned up. Big game kid, eighty minutes. Ellis showed why he's the best loose forward in the league. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying anything I've not said before, but Luke Kid Ellis is the best thirteen in the league. Mm. I'll say that again. Luke Kid Ellis is the best thirteen <laughs> in the league. He, he is. He, at, get, he gets into every other side in the league at thirteen, and he also gets in as a starting prop. I agree. He was, he was immense. He might play, he might play for Warrington off bench as a starting prop, as a prop, sorry, but he'd start at thirteen for them. Yeah. No question, Curry, yeah. Curry moved back into second row. Well, should we dive into players now, or do you want to go through the game first? What do you reckon, lads? I feel like we've waited long enough. Should we? Should we go and dive into the game? Let's yeah, let's, talk, the let's game. do the talking points for the game, and then let's speak about individual performances at the end. Yeah. So, the kick off. We obviously um, kicked to KR. I love kicking off in a final. I don't know what it is. How long is this video going to be if you're going to talk about the kick on this? First hit up was Jesse <laughs> Sue. <laughs> you ran it in just to the left of the post. Not, not every day we get to do an episode where we say we're now Grand Slam winners. <clears throat> Milk it out. Um, I thought they had the better of the early arm wrestle, but only just. Uh, that, that's what I was going to say. The, the difference for me between the two sides in the early goings was the long kicking game. Mm. Because that saved us. Because they were making more meters than we were. Mm. We were a bit more passive in defence. I think that was on purpose. Mm. Because that's how a tactic is bend, but don't let them through. Mm. Don't use all your energy trying to keep them in their own half. But they were making better meters. They were enjoying the better field position. With that, I just want to jump in there. Obviously, the, the keeping him in their own half. I think we do that very well at times. And there must be a call that goes out. Of, I think there is. We're yeah. going to pin him now. I think there is. Um, I don't think it worked this game, which we'll talk about a bit more later. But they were keeping us. They were making Harry kick from deep. Yeah. But he was finding the grass. His long kicking game was almost perfect. We'll if, come back to this at the end, like you've just said. But I, when we go through players that have stood out, my right. Harry Smith. So well, I'll come back to that at the end. But yeah, yeah I thought fantastic. I thought his long kicking game kept us in the arm wrestle. Yeah. Whereas I think if he put a few poor kicks in, we would not have been in the arm wrestle. You saw. Hull KR's most dangerous play all year has been the bomb that May gets underneath mm. or Hiku gets underneath the bomb and contests it. And that's where the no try came from. Yeah. 
you can't do that unless you're attacking the mm-hmm. line. You have to be kicking from 40. Oh, well, oh, closer than that, I think. 20, 30, I think. You have to be kicking from there to put it right on top of Misky's head with accuracy and time you run. That's what I mean about the way that it was. They never got to that no. real position to kick. And the one time they did, I, I'm not sure when the first error actually was in this game that wasn't somebody trying to score a try. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, we made a few errors. Like They made a couple of errors trying to score a try. You know, throwing the ball around on yeah. our line. Mm. And you think, well, that, that doesn't count as an error. Yeah, not yeah. really. I don't remember the first it's error. not a costly they, error. No, no. I don't remember the first properly unforced error they made where they weren't trying to score a try. I mean, it was a free throwing game. I mean, I'm sure Duke's in a bit. You'll go through stats. But plenty of people making over 50, mm. 40 tackles, which shows you the ball was in play for a long period was, of time. Yeah. And they were... Like I said, no errors, no stop stay. It was just end-to-end stuff of make tackles, kick, make tackles, kick. So. Well, I think the first stoppage was was Harry Smith's 40-21. That almost mm. got a 40-20. I and was, then I, Minchella... I was adamant that was a 40-20. <laughs> Minchella had to get bandaged up, didn't he? So that stopped the game yeah. for a little bit. But then after that, it was probably the no try mm. for Mikey Lewis. Yeah. Which, we had a great view. He definitely knocked mm. it on. Well, that I mean, was you, it, right? And we knew, we knew we weren't worried when it when it sent up to the screen. At least I wasn't because I had no. a perfect mm-hmm. view that May had knocked it on into Misky. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I I only worried about it when I watched the replay because I couldn't tell if it had hit Misky, and I thought it's going to go in forward, but it can't get forward pass. That, that was genuinely what went through my head at the time. As soon as it went up, I went, "This is no try." It's, it's no definitely try. a knock. It's on. definitely a knock on. Yeah, I, I thought it was. De- I saw May's hand in real time mm. touch it into Mickey, Misky's head. And that's what it showed on the replay, you know. So, not a difficult one for the video ref. No, not a difficult one. This, no. um, which was short and fair play it was Liam Byrne. Well, uh, not Liam Byrne, bloody hell, Liam Moore. Bloody. Liam Byrne, he's gone up doing video ref. No wonder he won. <laughs> Liam Moore. Uh, yeah, because it took him five seconds. You yeah. watched it once. It just went. Yeah, he's knocked it on. Seen it. Yeah, no try. It was an easy one. Get on with grand final. It was an easy like, one for Liam. You know, and that, I, know, but I do see easy ones. What they watch about Twenty-five times, yeah. a bit like we all know what's going on. Just get the not try up there. That's true. the only game. So true. fair play to him. So I guess the next big moment would be Junior. Junior's, uh, but getting mm. brain busted onto the turf with a real hard hit. What do you think of the initial tackle? Because I've seen people comparing it to Asiata. No, I don't think it is. No, I, I, I think it's a good tackle. I, I think I think he slipped a little bit trying to get him yeah. around the waist, and he's just slipped and gone slightly lower. I think. Probably should have given the ball in the back, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. You, do you know what? I think you've got a credit, actually, if anything. Yeah. You, Junior Sam had always been destructive. There's only one thing you can do. Get your head down, get your shoulder in, and hit him as hard as you physically can and hope for the best. Mm. And that's what he's done. He flips and he's like, well, that's how you stop Junior December. Because yeah, yeah. no one else, you, you just let him run out, he's going to run over top of you. We've seen it time and time again. He cops a smack in the face on the way down from mm. Peter Haku. Then he cops three people flopping on him, mm. which, no, in... In the split second, I think the flops are okay. I think it's one of them flops forearm to head. Yeah, that was the one that, that that I didn't like. I didn't. I definitely didn't like that. Whether a player is out or not, you can't just drop your forearm onto the head. Um, I didn't like that at all. Is that the budgie one? Yeah, and I yeah. can't quite believe it wasn't picked up. Everyone's saying that. Yeah, it's not picked up by the match review because panel. match because... review panel's not picked it up. The video over, no. and people are quite critical of Sky for saying that they kept on cutting it short where you wouldn't actually see because it. Because sort of the video ref checked the bachelor tackle mm. and he checked the Hiku thing, and he was obviously fine with both of them. Mm. But then he stopped checking it. Yeah, because probably he presumed that that was why the injury was caused, yeah. and he didn't check the Burgess thing. But Junior, well, it looked worrying for a time, didn't it? It looked it looked worrying. But again, I've watched it back. He's still moving on the floor. I didn't think he was at the game, but he is still he's moving. He's still moving. His legs are moving. His arms are moving. He's still pumping his legs. He thinks he might score a try. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the thing I've seen, that people complaining that doctors have, have allowed him to go back on the field. And doctors haven't got any choice. He passed the HIA. He wasn't unconscious because he was still moving. He passes it or he fails it, and then he makes a decision. Yeah. The doctors haven't got any choice. The doctors have not, certainly not, sent a person out there who had been concussed or not unconscious. They have not done that. He could still pass it. They've never done that. And them say he's not fit enough to go back on. Yeah. That's what happened to Charlie, but it was was, because Charlie was... They were worried about the neck He was worried about his neck, yeah. So clearly, the doctors said he is. Now, I I, I don't want to go on to this, but obviously we did the interview with um, Professor Chris Brooks. Our chairman is a doctor. Hmm. 
who has stud- been involved. I'm sure he said his wife was involved on the study of head injuries and how they're affected and what they do. Mm. We are not, and no doctor is going to risk his license to break a law or break a rule to allow a player to go back on. Not a chance. They're not at all. They're also not going to break. Well, the doctor's independent, so you won't have any vice. No. It's independent. Mm. And that's who carries out the HIA, isn't it? So there's, there's one of each. There's, there's no there's real. A, there's an independent and there's a club doctor doing it yeah. together. So clearly, he was fit to come back on. Yeah. Oh, you saw him. He was fine. Yeah. He was um, fine, but he looked fine when he was going off. But that doesn't always necessarily translate to him being fine. Hmm. I do remember thinking Matt Cooper with that, that head knock, and obviously it led to his retirement. Yeah. But I thought, oh, he stood up. He'll be back on, and that's why I walk off and went. He can't pass that. No, I didn't think he was going to come. I didn't. Think I he was didn't think the he fact he has come back on means obviously he has passed it mm. and everything. The protocol's been done. We've got to trust the medical protocols. And he was mm. fine to come back on. I was the one to let him. But yeah, I think most people are just shocked and probably this controversy. Even though there is no real controversy, he's passed it. He's come back on. But I think people are questioning it because I think everyone in that stadium went. I mean, I know Kyle Amo and I've watched big Kyle lights back on. Yeah, he's kind of just goes. After unfortunately him. for that young man, he's been you know the superstar. But unfortunately for him, his grand final's over because no one believes he's coming back no. on. So I think it was the shock of the game, probably when he does walk back on. No, it's probably time to go on to a magic moment. Yeah. Can I talk about the pre prelude to the magic moment? Yeah. Mikey Lewis kicks a head for himself and Field kicks it dead and we concede a dropout. Yeah. And I think that might have been our first dropout of the game or the first mm. dropout of the game. I think we only give one all game, didn't we? A repeat set. <clears throat> and they did nothing with it. And not only did they do nothing with it, they didn't try and do anything with it. No. The last tackle play was give it to Hicko on a crash at about 15 yards out and he just gets tackled. Mm. They didn't chance to round once in that whole set. Big win for us, that. Mm. Big win for us, that. Then, we're still tr- we're still in trouble because we're in, we're in a yardage set and we're working really hard and they're pinning us deep. And the goal forward from Ethan Havard mm. that he gets us going... The, Watch the play before the try. It's, That's it, my advice to everyone who wants to learn more about rugby league. Watch the play before the try. It's his little right foot shimmy. Yeah, it's it's not just the play the ball and the pass and the move that get you in for a try. It goes back further than that, doesn't it? Mm. You've got to get yourself going forward. You've got to get your side going forward. You've got to get the play the ball in the right location uh, and you've got to get it at the right speed. And I think Ethan Haver did all those things. He got us going forward. He got us into halfway in the middle of the park. And, and he pinches five more metres. Yeah. And you can just see the line. You, you just have to jog back a little bit further. It then allows a quick pass. Cade Ellis to get on the front foot. Mm. And get the ball to Bevan French on the front foot. That's the important thing. We, we're, we're going forwards. We're not, we're not going sideways. We're going forwards. Mm. Like, oh, Ellis is moving forwards. French is moving forwards. He's not running sideways, dummy, because that's easy to defend against. Yeah. When he talks about it all the time, playing straight. Yeah. Play straight. You've got to. Go there, don't, don't run sideways, don't run diagonally, and close <clears> off the space out wide. Run straight. Attract defenders, then give the ball out the back. Oh, short ball. I'm in French's case, dummy, and just screw yourself. But yeah. you've got to do that from playing straight and making defenders plant the feet. But this is obviously a magic moment. But have you paused it there just before he passes yeah. or before he throws the dummy? If that ball goes out the back to Jay Field, I think we're in. I do as well. I th- but what I wanted to say with this is, obviously, Evels is, is out the back at, at full back. Because of that carry by Havard, if you actually count the numbers up, Lehman obviously deals with the marker by just stepping out and, mm. and, and creating a bit of time. <clears throat> when Kade Ellis gets the ball, we're actually 7v4. Mm. 7v5, sorry. The first pass from Liam Byrne takes out pretty much one defender. We're now 5v3. And a fourth defender for Hulk KR scrambling across. That is just Bevan French's bread and butter. Yeah. If that fourth defender gets in or, or, or the third defender in Mikey Lewis's case manages to deal with French, we play to field mm. and probably score. And also, I, I'm sure Hulk KR will have watched the Challenge Cup final and seen the line that Liam Farrell ran mm. off the back of the pass from field. He runs the same line in this yeah. case. Yeah. And that's why... Um, Mikey Lewis is worried it, it about Far- him. He's, he's worried about Farrell there's not enough inside pressure from Lytton mm. that's Ellis's fault that's Parcel uh, Parcel sorry yeah. that, that's because of Ellis mm. then Lewis is, is looking outside at Farrell but, that's because of the cup final try that we scored but put yourself in Lewis's position here 
at your inside shoulder, you've got Bevan French running. On your outside shoulder, you've got Liam Farrell. And then you're also looking that out the back, they've got a 3v2 of, of Field, Kieran and... What's the golden uh, rule? Like? When you're defending, what's the golden rule? You take the man with the ball. You take the man with the ball, thank you very exactly. much. Exactly. You take the man with the ball and you let somebody else worry about the man outside. But, you're not making throw the pass. They could throw a crap pass. They could yeah, knock yeah. on whatever. But you just you've got to force him to make the pass. My point. My point was is Wigan have got three. <laughs> Easier said than done. when you're defending Bevan French. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. and that dummy. <laughs> he throws that dummy so well. Yeah. yeah. This isn't the dummy that throws into Rose Ed. This mm. is a delicate dummy. Mm. Well, you think he's just mm. going to drop it on field's lap? Yeah. His change of pace as well. He kind of almost goes three quarters at the line, and as soon as he dummies, he just gets from three quarters to 100%. Mm. So quick, a little that. burst of power and acceleration. There's not it much. just means if it is a loose arm and not a proper oh, yeah. shoulder body in front contact, he's just going to run through that loose arm. It's that power. You know what it is for me? It's his hips. Once his legs get going and you're mm. trying to grab at his hips, his hips look really strong to me. Like You can't. He's accelerating through it and really pushing through. Pass oh, over Lewis. They're not quite in sync, but it's not by much. It's mm. not a huge gaping hole that he's run no, through. No, no. It is. It and then once he gets through the line, he steps now levels twice. It's mm. so clever. This he slows down. Evels is sprinting up to try and tackle him, which I think is the wrong thing. He almost get up and then back off a little well, bit. Leaving one to score. Leaving one to score because they had a man there. But back yeah, off and mm. back off and back off and buy as much time as you can. And that's where I think Field excels mm. at full back defensively. But he slows down and just puts a little bit of a left foot step on to go towards the corner. And as soon as Evelds commits, right foot beats him on his inside and accelerates. That is that's so good. Mm. That is so so good. You, you I'm not going to see a player like Bevan again. Again, you can't coach it. And he said quite a few times in recent weeks that's because until he was 18, there wasn't any structure to his game. Mm-hmm. It was play what you see. No coaching, no patterns, no double X, no anything. Just play what you see. And that is playing what he sees. There's a fullback. I don't need support. I'm going to beat him. Yeah. Going to get to the trial line. He even looks at Chris Kendall and asks him if he wants to pass. Have you seen that? He looks at Kendall and says, do you want it? Because Kendall's on his shoulder. Because he's quite quick, isn't he, Kendall? He's rapid, Kendall. He's rapid. So he looks at Kendall on his shoulder and says, do you want it? There's scores. He's got time to have a laugh. Like last week when he put that kick through, he was laughing at Kieran before mm. he even scored. He's just a brilliant player and he just plays what he sees and he has a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, definitely. Now, that... What was you feeling when he scored? Just... Uh, it, I don't think I actually realised at the time just how good of a try it was. And I think the reason is because obviously when it goes to Bevan French, you kind of always feel like something's about to happen. Do you know what I mean? Or something yeah. could happen at any given moment. So as soon as French got it, you kind of go, oh, danger, yeah, yeah. we're in, you we're in, we're forward, in. Like, you? You think, yeah, you lean forward and go, we're in here. He's got it, hands on, his, his hands are on the ball tap. Then you see him throw the dummy and go break the line. And you're like, right, we're in. And as soon as he breaks through, I just start to try. Mm. I thought Evels ain't stopping him. I never thought Evels was catching no. stopping him. No, no. I don't think, think any fullback does. No, no, no fullback does. And that's proper scurry, that. Field, maybe, if there was on a ball in deep. Do you know what I mean? I think getting fans against. Maybe. I, just, I, don't, I still don't think so. I don't think for that. Yeah, but. So, that, that was just mental. And My only he, concern was when maybe he'd try and slow down and get somebody to pass it to, but he didn't need it. No. He needed to complete the right It's been brilliant seeing the videos on social media where it literally plays it side by side yeah. on top of the Rob Burrow one and yeah. literally playing in unison. And you see that, and obviously the first Rob Burrow award and. I thought like, oh, that like, well, what a great moment. I think that Rob Burrow would have absolutely loved that try. Yeah. Like, for that to be the match win try in the end of the day. And for him to get the Rob Burrow award, and, yeah. you know, and it's been renamed the Rob Burrow award this year, and it's it, it's it is it's fantastic. It's a special it's a, moment. I mean, when he's again, that's a clip you can mark at the game round. Put those two tries side by side, watch them in unison, and see how similar they are, and make that Burrow's narrative still better in it. Well, it is, mm. it is, but it's only because of the position on the field. I think, mm. but they're so similar. They are quite similar, and and Bevins is a magic try, yeah. absolutely incredible magical try, and that's what we bought him for. Yeah, he's on plenty of money. Yeah. That's what we do. Big games this year, he stepped up, and big games. I'm going to talk him about him a lot. Spoiler: Jay Field has stepped up, and mm. this game, Jay Field stepped up. I'll talk about him a lot in that second half. Jay Field was pro- possibly my best on field mm. second half. 
but I'll talk about it more in a bit. In a bit. Right. I want to I wanna move on to three minutes later. Obviously, Kieran kicks the goal. Yeah. Six points to nil. Yeah, loving it. We play the first set. Smith puts a, puts a kick up. And at the time, I'm going to be honest, I was a little bit disappointed with the kick because I didn't think he got the distance on it. Hmm. And obviously, Joe Burgess doesn't think he's got the distance on it because he turns around to try and block and let Evans catch it. And it bounces right next to him. Have you ever seen a rugby player kick a ball like that on the half volley? Not quite so. Not quite so effectively. And and it takes some finish in this mm. with a defender draped all over him. It was such a good try. And this is where it's annoying. I was furious. Honestly, at the ground, I thought they'd ruled Wardle offside. I thought they'd ruled And Wardle. I was absolutely fuming because I was adamant Jake Wardle was onside. Now I've watched it back and seen the video ref. Someone someone texted in our group saying that it was Thompson yeah. offside. Oh, Thompson, did they? See, amazing. I never knew that. I was convinced he'd chalked off. So I thought, World Club Challenge, we lost that try to a... Because it was different mm. rules. Mm. And it was still 50-50 with the different rules. Challenge Cup final, I think that double movement from Bevan was 50-50. And this one, I thought, we've just lost three incredibly special tries in finals mm. due to nonsense from video refs. But actually, that was because I thought he'd ruled Wardle offside and he hadn't he'd ruled Thompson off. But again... Now, it is the rule. To, oh, yeah. He's, got, he's got it right. Nonce, he, he has made no impact so on that. I think I had more impact on that try sat in the stand Thompson did. That, because... He stood still. He's actually he takes a step backwards and walks away from the ball. Yeah, because he, he knows, because he knows he might be offside. I'm not having that he affected the play. No, but it is the rule, so you can't. How do you how do they decide the within ten thing as well? Is it as the crow flies or is it on actual pitch markers? I don't know. Surely it should be as the crow flies. In which case, we've got the technology now to put a 10, 10 meter radius around the player receiving the ball. Or around the ball where it bounces. Could you, could you imagine that with VAR and they start drawing mm. lines? Off. Well, VAR would have this sorted because now it doesn't need to draw lines anymore. It's got the automatic mm. one. So VAR would actually have done this try properly. But I'm just imagining a grand final. They put a circle out around the ball bouncing and then you get a, a, a little line coming up to Luke Thompson's knee. If you don't make any effort to go towards the ball, I feel like it should be okay. And actually, you know this rule's bad because... It w- it went against Wigan, and people are still annoyed by it. Mm. And usually, you know, when things go against Wigan, they're the best rule. In the- Remember when Golden mm, Point yeah. when we lost in Golden Point, it was brilliant then. Yeah, yeah. When rules go against Wigan, especially but Saints as well and Leeds, they're the be- they're the worst rule. Mm. If it goes for Wigan, and the best rule if it goes against them, people have got double standards because because they're bitter about those three teams. But for this one, everyone else is really annoyed because they think this should be given as a try and. It, it would have benefited Wigan. So you know now that it really is a bad rule. Mm. Mm. If people are saying that. Definitely. So that was 24th, 25th minute in the next 10 to 15. Probably back into the arm wrestle. I don't think either team really chanced the arms. Uh, we had... I want to I talk about a couple of try savers. There was a try saver Bevan French made on Lewis mm. towards yes. the end of the first half. Yep. Fantastic try saver. And the only reason it was a fantastic try saver was because because Adam Kieran had 100% faith in Bevan. Yeah. And I think it might have even been after Bevan got done for crossing. Because he mentioned it in his post match interview. It was, yeah. It was. <clears throat> and Pete mentioned it actually. And I thought this was really interesting. They both independently said the same thing. They said Bevan got done for crossing, or Bevan said I got done for obstruction or whatever. And the boys defended it. Well, they did, but it, it was you with the try saver, to be honest, Bevan. Mm. You, dig, you dug yourself out there. But it's because Kieran trusts him. Mm. I think earlier on in the season, Kieran's diving in there. And and Lewis passes it to Hall. Hall's an expert in those situations. Mm. Now, I do still think Lewis could have done a lot better with this t- chance. Yeah. I think if he runs directly at Kieran, then he gives Kieran no choice. Mm. And then he can just... Miski will have to jam in on Broadbent and he mm. can just slip. Yeah. Uh, if, they, if they execute the score. Whoever it is, it, it might have, yeah, it was Broadbent, wasn't it? He can give it to Hall and Hall's score. Because Hall's an expert. Yeah. I think if Hall had been given the ball twice in this game when Lewis kept it, he, he would have scored one of them at least. Mm. But Lewis kept it. 
Because and I think to be honest, Mikey Lewis kept the ball too much. Yeah. And Tyrone May didn't keep it enough. Mm. If if May played for me, if May played for Wigan, I'd want him playing like early Cade Cust. Early 2022 Cade Cust. He's an athlete, isn't he? He's an athlete. He's taking the line on. He's reaching over. He's, he's using his body. And then, later on in the game, Evels is wide open. Because you've used... That's what that's what Custom Field used to... That was brilliant. We saw with... Ever, with for his name now, May, that he used his body and his athleticism to out-jump Misky. Mm. So there's one example already. I don't know, yeah. slightly different, but... I think clearly... sometimes he gave the ball he gave the ball when he should have run it. I think he should have run the ball more and Lewis definitely should have passed the ball more. Yeah. I will say, I think, though, there's just a bit of a lack of consistency about what they're going to do. Because two or three times, Evels made a big run, didn't get the ball, and then a couple of sets later, didn't get it mm. in the same position. And he got behind the player. And yeah. Maybe the, just a lack of... There was a bit of a lack of killer. Game in, there was a bit of a lack of killer instinct, I think, from them. Mm. Do you think um, Lewis was trying to score because he was feeling the pressure as Man of Steel and he was going against Bevan, who'd already scored, and he was the Man of Steel I, before him? I don't know if this was maybe a hockey uh, tactic for a grand final. If they went a bit more Ian Watson pragmatic kind of style, think? maybe not wanting to throw the ball about as they would normally do, wanting to maybe just change and go a bit more boring. Well, you Mikey can't put Lewis. the kicks in, can you, with the ultra? That's what I mean. You can't throw um, it about. You them can't... keeping the ball. and I mean, it's the thing about OK, really. Though they've played in the regular season, it's not really Old Trafford October rugby, is it? Well, this is it, Throwing right? Throwing the ball. does. I mean, your dad said to us, didn't he, in, in, in the pub before, there's one thing they've done better than us this season, one stat where they kind of outdo us. And it was offloads. Mm. And I'm like, I know, but offloads ain't grand final. Not We're today, a bit no. offloads. I mean, it started chucking it down. It was, yeah. it was second half and Hellstone and everything. Like, that's not offloading. That's five drives and a kick. And five drives and a kick are back wigging over any team. And especially up here. With that, though, I always think big moments, big pressure things, you go back to what you used to. Mm. And Wigan's <clears> automatic <throat> go-to shape is lead runner, man out the back. Lead runner, man out the back. Mm. I can hit you. I can hit back. We can we can play with five six options. Let's get tackled on a post. Yeah, yeah. let's get set up here. Mm. We're gonna play this way, and then the flair of Bevan French and Jay Fields and Harry Smith will come off the back of that. I find it. I don't necessarily see that identity with Hulk here that they can resort to type. I just think a, if if, a, if a you're lot of type, if man. you're not bothered about being the one who scores the try. Mm. You can run at the centre and put somebody else in, mm. in that situation. And it happened a few times where Kieran made a last ditch tackle. Bevan yeah, you made, made one on Broadbent as well. Bevan didn't made it? a brilliant last ditch tackle in that first half, and, and you think and Field made so many, and you think, oh, brilliant, amazing defence. But actually, is it a bit naive an attack? Is it a bit selfish even? Mm. Because if you're not bothered about being the one who scores, and this is why, I'd have Jay Field over any fullback in the league. I don't think Jay Field minds if he's not the one who scores a try. Mm. I think Bevan almost does sometimes. Mm. I think that makes Bevan a little bit selfish, and I think we can have that as a six. But I think Field doesn't mind. I think almost sometimes he'd rather put a try on than score one. Mm. And you have to have that mindset. You have to think, look, I know I'm a big threat here for scoring, but I'm going to do the right thing, and I'm going to put put the team before myself. Mm. And I think I think we did that a bit better than they did, and I, and I don't want to call people out for being selfish because they're probably not. They're probably just playing in the heat of the moment, what they know. But I do think that we played a bit more in attack. We played more as a team. We weren't yeah. bothered about being the one who scored. I think I think that's it though. You resort to type. Mikey Lewis's big thing is the left foot step, got myself mm. and score. Mm. So when you're in that situation and you've got two options, you do the one that you're most used to. Like I say, Wiggins is that player. Jake Wardles is that big left foot step. Even though he's shown the shimmy on the right hand side, where he goes out, he can go on the outside. He always wants to come back in naturally. Mm-hmm. And I think that might just have been it with Lewis. Even French did it. Where his thing is that right foot step. As I'm shaping to go outside, big right foot step, and he got away with it and scored. But it's because we had the shape to go off. I don't think Hulk Hare had that shape for Mikey Lewis to then go himself. I don't. I don't think they set it up right. Mm. And like I said, the. the they were entertaining under Tony Smith and they played some free rugby. I don't think they've necessarily got a complete attacking identity mm. that we will always do this. Mm. 
Speaking of, we got down the field right at the end of the half due to a high shot on Wardle. Mm. And we put on a few plays. Mm. And Ryan Hall did two try savers where he knocked the ball on. Mm. So I think Hall reads this perfectly. And, and I, I was annoyed at the game because I thought, Kieran goes himself, then passes, maybe we score. Watching it back, I think it's just defended perfectly. Mm. Yeah. He, get, Ryan Hall. he gets his hand in between and he defends it perfectly, I think. And and Ryan Hall, for me, if Hulke OK, won that game, Ryan Hall would have been my man of the match by a country mile. Because yeah. Ryan Hall was absolutely outstanding. His metres, we never contained him once. His defence, I thought he was absolutely outstanding, Ryan Hall. Yeah. I thought he was really, really good. I thought he was unfortunate. He's probably the only player, or one of the only players, probably some of the forwards as well, who was I could see could count himself unfortunate to be on the losing side because he had given it everything and he played really, really well. Yeah. And so Hall obviously is leaving now to go to Leeds, but Le- Leeds have still got a good one. Oh He's God! Still yeah. got well, he said that when he moved. He said, "Look, I'm not going here." It was like a retirement for mm. tale. He was. Uh, I've got. I still think I can offer something. He's got plenty in the tank. Off, terms, going off yeah. the back of this, it's a grand final. Yeah, yeah. And he's possibly the best on field. Yeah. Certainly is for OKR. Yeah. By a mile, their best player. Right. Before we get to half time, obviously we, we get downfield. I was screaming at Bevan French because he got up and then had a bit of a push and whatever. And I'm thinking. We're trying to take a quick play no, to get a no. one-pointer. He set it up. He set up the one-pointer. That all that fake. Oh, we we were faking, being annoyed at each other. Mm. As a bit of misdirection. I don't think it worked. I, they knew the one-pointer was coming. Yeah. Let's be honest. But we tried a bit of misdirection. Bevan got tackled. In the perfect spot for if you're going to mm. take a one-point shot and and to drill that under pressure in a grand final. Like, oh. Come on, what more can we say about Harry Smith? I can't remember him practising one at, in the pre-match warm-up. He usually does, but I, I can't remember him practising one either. Mm. I do want to say something I just thought about it. I said to you, you know we talk about the small in goals at Old Trafford. Mm. All three of our players, of that potential kickers really, French, uh, Field and Smith, mm. all took two or three kicks where they practised just laying one into the in goal mm. with a little bit of a, a thing a little bit of kick behind and obviously we never got into a position to really see it we didn't have a, a, an extended period of time down there but I thought it was just worth pointing out that clearly they know, to, they know that it's short it's not a hidden secret well they've trained all week with a short angle but just practising it again that we can get repeat sets I think <clears throat> that just shows you what, the, what they're looking for they're looking for perfection and, and almost perfect preparation of that why can they not fill that drop off at the end of the dead ball area with like foam you know those big foam things that you can get at the uh, trampoline park I think you're a bit, if you like you're turning to set off mm. and you're pushing into foam on the floor are you more talking about keeping the end goal short and just having foam though so you don't hurt yourself yeah so you don't hurt yourself you know, even Bevan scored a pretty normal try and he still ended up falling down it and Burgess fell down it trying to stop it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was just a normal tr- attempt at a try. I don't want to ask. But it's, it's almost like it links with all traffic. You cannot it? say that people risking their necks just to score a normal try mm-hmm. is part of the grand final. You can't it's, it's say not, that. It's not, it? But you always see it and you... Luke Lewis nearly died trying to score a try. You always look at it and just go... It's not right that, but then we just play it anyway because it's the grand final. I know, final. but surely, surely there can be something. <laughs> no, surely there can be something. Imagine, you know, like when they practised at the DW with shorter in goals. Imagine this last one just dug it up, dug the corns up. And just just make it a swimming pool. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Grand final meets total life. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. If you really wanted to spice it up, make it crocodile infested. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you go and try and score a try there. <laughs> I would not be sliding at that end goal. <laughs> um, right, we'll t- that's half time, 7 0. Yeah, what a drop, drop goal, by the way. What a decision yeah, yeah, to make a drop goal. 7 0 is so much different to 6 0. He just nails it, doesn't he? And to be honest, I'm going like, to mention one more thing. I know I said we're going to go on a quick break, but <laughs> you see what we did at half time? We all got together really quickly and then we're straight off the field. Ellis did that. Proper leader. Kid Ellis is a leader, isn't he? Mm. Yeah. Told you he's next captain. Um, 
and Hunky I just saw they got together but then just sort of took the time getting back and I don't know whether that was by design or just accidental mm. but there was a big push for Wigan to get in the changing rooms from mainly Cade Ellis pushing like almost pushing them down mm. and I don't know but do you think that had an effect? Maybe you never know, do you? It's small margins on a on a grand final. Mm. Someone, men- someone mentioned about Hulk KR walking out and that there was a little bit of looking around and waving and yeah, it was Sam. Sam Tompkins said that. Do you remember when we went to Tottenham? Do you remember what they did instead of doing the captain's run? Mm. They walked out at Tottenham and practiced where they line up, where the family would be sitting, what it'd be like when they sung the national anthem. Pete's big on that with that with yeah visualization. Eh? But now having won the grand final last year to then sit there and go it's the same as what we did last year they're going to be sat in the same spots they're going to do this everything's going to be the same and being able to grab young Tom Forber who we've not talked about yet and say listen your family's going to be sat there you're on the bench take your time take it in you can almost bring them players Mm. into that environment early I'm not sure it had a massive impact I know Sam said that it could have an impact but Hulky, I started the game pretty well, so mm. I, I don't think you can say it has such an impact. But I just think it's just to note that, you, that you're used to that environment. Wigan are used to being at Old Trafford now, mm. and it might not matter at any point, but it could matter at some point mm-hmm. if that if that makes sense. Yeah, it could do. Right, we're going to take a quick break. That's half time. It's seven nil. Mm. Um, and in case you forgot, Wigan still hold all four trophies. Another mm. half where we've not conceded a point. Yeah, yeah. So what is that now? Uh, seven halves oh, of I'll, rugby. I'll, I'll read all the stats out I've got them all <laughs> prepped um, we'll back after this break so second half um, come back out and obviously we, we received kick off first ten or so minutes games in a little bit of an arm wrestle really um, how how are you feeling in that first the, the start of the second half more than more than anything? Obviously, it stayed at seven nil for about ten fifteen minutes. Did you start to have nerves set in? Because I'll be honest, I was still quietly confident. I yeah, I didn't see them breaking our line twice. Well, someone said to me, I don't know if you guys picked up on this. I can't even remember who said it to me. I think um, someone I was with at the game said to me, obviously at the start we didn't we were focused. We came out, we were focused, and you made that point before, about KR looking to the crowd and we were focused. But on the way out for the second half, we did seem to look up to the stands and clap and wave mm. and got, kind of get the crowd going. And I wonder if the parting message out of the changing rooms was, boys, when you go out there and line up for that kickoff, take a look in that Stretford end and look at the reason you're doing this. Mm. Look at the town backing you. I wonder if that was just a point where he said, boys, have a look. See what you're doing. See why you're doing it, and and give them some love, because then they'll back you all the way home. Mm. <clears throat> you know, with a with a small lead, like a narrow lead, two score lead, you need your fans on your side. Even though it was a narrow lead, though there was a part of me for that first staff. I know they had a no try from the kick, but I just thought they don't look like scoring. I thought the kick I was thought, the only chance. Yeah, I thought to myself. Besides, maybe a bit of scrappy play, maybe off a kick or something. But I yeah, think- not twice. And I'm scoring twice, and I was just like, there was just a mm. part of me. And I know after the game, we talk about our feelings at full time. But even like when we were sitting in the pub after the game and talking, there was a comment that said that we could have played all night and they wouldn't have scored. And it felt a bit like that. I, yeah. just, I just thought, when we went in seven, especially after the drop goal, it was a bit like, even though it's only seven points, it's two scores, it's really nothing in a game of rugby league. But in the context of the game, I just thought, I think we're all here. Yeah, I just I said it to you. I couldn't see us conceding two. Mm. I could see us maybe getting one, but them to get ten points, and if they get ten and the game opens up, I was thinking we will get one more. Uh, uh, yeah, I think if if we needed two, we would have scored again. Because we blew someone. We're going to talk we blew about two, that in a minute. Yeah. Um, but before that, fifteen minutes into the second half. First thing I want to talk about is Adam Kieran's tackle on Jack Broadbent. Another try saver. A big try saver. This is a try all day. Big this. moment. Um, French and Farrell uh, dealing man to man. French is able to get across and help him, but this is a pretty much a one on one tackle from Adam Kieran, who, yeah. who 
to be honest, I had some question marks about him defensively. But I come back to what happened last year with Toby King. King had a lot of question marks about him defensively on that right hand side with Miski and, and French and whoever was out there. And in the back end of the season, we talked about how good they were as a partnership defensively. Yeah. Clearly, I, I'm going to question when you play alongside a player like Bevan French, who's so good going forward. Maybe the harder thing is is your defensive partnerships. I think now he trusts Bevan French, and he trusts Liam mm. Farrell, and he trusts Abbas Miski, and he, and you need to have trust in your fellow defenders. How many times does the right centre get blamed for a try being scored? Mm. How many times? And and if this try had been scored, I'm sure people would have been blaming Kieran. Mm. But if you cannot trust the man to your left and your right and two into your left as a right centre, you cannot defend. You can't be in the position you want to you be. You cannot defend. And that was King's problem that started last year and it's Kieran's problem that started this year. It's no longer a problem. If you can't trust the defenders inside and outside, you cannot defend mm-hmm. effectively. It's, it's next to impossible. Um, you certainly can't do this. I'm defending at the minute though, Kieran as well. He's always making good times. He's putting like shots on everything. Mm-hmm. I remember he did a couple in the semi final, didn't he? he Smash my and the ball come free. Yeah. It looks like he's confident in his own defence now that, you know, you know he, he's almost enjoying tackling and lining people up. He looks, I don't want to say tougher, but he looks more hardened mm. to me. He's running the ball a lot better this back end of the season. He's making more metres. It makes a big difference as well with, with the kicks, mm. with the kicking. Mm. Because. He's in the game more. Not having to worry about that penalty that he takes in a bit. No. Not having to worry about that going over. No. It's a difficult no. kick, that. Yeah. In front of a hostile crowd. It's not an easy kick. And uh, were you ever worried Kieran was going to miss it? No, but I also think it helps Kieran that it gives him another part to his game that he is known for and he's known as being a good kicker. It's so good. That he's now kick. kicking. Uh, it's, it's I actually, love having a good kicker. But I think it just gives him a bit more confidence of actually, I'm doing this, I know what I'm doing. I've got my name on the score sheet. I've been involved, but I've already put two points on the board. You know, it just gets you up a little bit more. Mm. So I think maybe maybe that's helped him a little bit more confidence wise. I don't I, I don't know. That would be something worth asking him. I don't think it's the end of the world if you don't have a good kicker, but having one, it makes you so much more confident going into games. And I think yeah. KR will find that next year with Reese Martin. With Reese Martin, and I think Leeds will find the opposite because they've had a good kicker for so long. Mm. It makes a big difference. Yeah, going up in sixes. Talking about kicking. I know if you, if you get a penalty, you, you yeah, well, yeah. well, if we want to take the two here, we're going to get the two. Yeah. Instead of being worried, because obviously we'll talk about this next one. Talking about not great kickers, Mikey Lewis isn't obviously a great kicker off the tee. No. You get a penalty for in that play with the broad bent tackle. Um, they go back to Minchella. Um, one's hit a little bit late off Luke Thompson. He's got a one game ban for it. Uh, so you'll miss England's uh, first game. Mm. You know, some extra time off. Yeah, um, but he would have wanted to play because he's, he's obviously going to be cornerstone of that England pack and it was in Wigan, mm, yeah. which is his hometown and he, he plays for the Wigan Warriors. So he would have wanted to certainly lead the pack into that game. But um, obviously, I think one for two was, was the right decision. Does, does anyone disagree? I'm, no. I'm torn on this. I'm torn, honestly. I I think I've thought a lot about this. The math says go to two, mm. go for two. And I've often said if you're seven or eight points down, go for two. I said it about Melbourne, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. Eight points behind, go for two. Because then in the last second, you're still in the game. You score a try, you convert it, you're still in the game. If you score a try there, you're not going to get a penalty, are you? But the thing with it being seven is is that you could go for one. Yeah, but my whole point is the math says go for two. However, and if if it was us, I'd want us to go for two. If I'm a KR fan, I don't. And the reason is, if you're playing it this way and you're playing with the maths, that's perfectly fine. Take the two, go within one score. That score still has to be converted. And you haven't got a good goal kicker. So all of a sudden you have to score another post for it to work. Mm. So you're all. So Reese Martin, you do. You if, you, if, I, if they had Reese Martin, I would one hundred percent take the two here. If Mikey Lewis is kicking, I'm going for a try. The, the only thing I'm going to say on this was I was relieved when he went, when Kendall pointed that they were going for the sticks. I was relieved because I thought they had a chance to have a full set on our line, and 
we, you know, we were having to defend back to back sets, which gets really tough. Mm. Which we had done before, and we did do again. But it gets really tough defending back to back sets. So I was relieved when I saw him pointing towards the sticks. Yeah, I think the psychological benefit of taking the two out ways. I think knowing that again, it is just. I know you're saying it has to be converted, but knowing that the nil has gone. Mm. You are now, and there's never really out of the game, but you are back in the. You got a bit of momentum on your side. It's all right. It's not two scores now. It's only one, one a conversion, and we can even win it. Um, I think it just kind of maybe settles any nerves. I think it builds them back into the game, gets just the scoreboard ticking over. I think it kind of does a lot for the the whole KS psyche going for the two. Though. Do you think it takes any pressure off the fact that you could get nilled? I think that's. I think that is yeah. in the Cause... in the mindset. They got nilled at Wembley, remember? Yeah. I'm just gonna throw one thing to you. Because I, I at the time thought, yeah, go for two. Makes sense, the maths. I've gone the other way. Do you not think this might have lifted Wigan a little bit going? These men don't think they can get two. No, I think it was a sigh of relief because they didn't have to defend back-to-back sets. I don't know about... I agree, but but my, my, ta- my thought at the time was, I can't see us conceding here. And there I certainly is... didn't think we could concede two. If you actually look into the maths, you should take two every time. No, no, I, I, I agree you, with you that. Because you don't score one out of three sets. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I fully agree with that. You should, I, if you want to do it with the maths, you should take two every time. I'm not, I'm not advocating that. I'm just saying, if you want to go with the maths, mm. you'd take two every time. But, I, but I was sat watching. I was thinking, I can't see them scoring. I couldn't see them scoring. So to say, I couldn't see them scoring twice. Mm. But with that, with the bad kicker. Sorry, not bad kicker. Not a great kicker. Oh, he's kicking in the 60s. I think you can say he's he's a poor goal kicker. Yeah. He's a great player, but a poor goal kicker. But I was like, going, like, we only need a point there. I was like thinking, if we, get, if we get another point here, they still have to score twice. If we get a penalty, they still have to score twice. I think it, it made a power mind whenever we got mm. a penalty. Yeah. But that's because we have a good goal kicker. We could mm. kick it over, like I said before, about Kieran. I don't know. I mean, he nearly missed it. Yeah. yeah. We don't mention this. When it came off his boots, I thought he's missed. I did say to you, really, imagine when your brother asked to say, what, what happens here if he misses it? What? Mm. I think it was almost a better result for us that he kicked it and we got yeah. down the other end of the pitch. Yeah, but how demoralising would that have been? If he missed it, that would have been game over. They would have lost 7 yeah. and they wouldn't have even tried anything. Um, now, I'm going to split the next, next bit up into two try savers and two chances that we blew. Should we start with what we blew? Well, do we take two first? Oh, sorry. Yes, yeah, yeah. We, we obviously which we have kind of mentioned, Lewis, uh, for a tip on a tip on Liam Farrell. I think he could have seen yellow. Mate. In the game, I thought I was convinced it was yellow because Adam Kieran saw yellow for a similar tackle mm-hmm. last year in exactly the same spot, and Harry Smith took two. So I think Kieran probably would have felt aggrieved that that wasn't yellow card when he is was a yellow in the final last year. The only thing, and watching this back three or four times has actually made me see the only thing what saves him. Obviously, when you put a guy in that over the horizontal position, the legs go above the horizontal, it's a penalty, mm. guaranteed. You've then got a couple of options. You either drive somebody's head into the floor, which is an automatic red card and a huge ban, as it should be. Mm. We don't see that often. You're not going to see that from Mikey Lewis. You could just drop him on his head. We see that. That's basically what Kieran did. That gets you a yellow. I think because he tries to pull him back up, and Farrell actually helps. Farrell saves him a bit from a yellow because Farrell moves his head and pushes sort his hand. Sort of makes it so he lands on his back. So he lands on his back. But I think Lewis does try and kind of rescue him. Mm. And I think that saved him from a yellow, to I be honest. I just think this has to be a yellow, me. It's a bad it, the initial. It's a big mistake. Because it's so dangerous. I know he tries to lift him up, but if he tries to lift him up and slips, or doesn't have control, Mikey Lewis is not a big man, first of all. He's in such a vulnerable, dangerous position that I just think that's a, that's an immediate dangerous tackle. It is a dangerous tackle, and that's the, why I, think I mean, it has the, to be a yellow. The I mean, biggest not... punishment is that he got his side back away two scores again, mm-hmm. and I actually don't mind that he kept thirteen on the pitch. I don't mind that he kept thirteen on the pitch. Honestly, I would have been much happier to see Burgess see yellow for drive, diving on the head of an injured player mm. than I would for this. Because I think, yeah, it was silly and yeah, it was reckless, but he does try and save him. Yeah, he doesn't try and drive him on his head. So I'm, I'm happy with him. St- and also, it gives him an excuse. 
Yeah, I don't want them to be any controversy. Because we beat them with 12 last time. There was no kind of, again, like you said, we've said, said this in the previous half, there was no real bans in the semi-final that were controversial. We could say, oh, well, that's not because we were missing him and he shouldn't have never been banned. That was never a ban mm-hmm. in the semi-final. There was none of that. There was no, again, both, it been Chell's back, Fowl's back. It was a bit like two teams, there's two strongest squads out. About a couple of injuries, like... Do you know what I mean? I didn't want there to be any controversy so like in the game. I just wanted to kind of beat them and no one can have anything to say except Wigan with a better team on the night. I, I just, just think is what's happened. I, I just think... I do Wigan, get what you mean. Wigan, We've seen Wigan people get yellows game, for that, haven't we? We have seen people get yellows for that tackle. If Wigan yeah. had lost this game, everyone is looking at that tackle saying, how has he not gone for 10 minutes? Mm. I think it's only the result that has stopped people going back and looking at it. I'm glad it has, though. I'm glad it has because yeah. I wanted 13 on 13 and I wanted to beat them 13 on 13. No excuses. I just don't drop someone on the red. Oh, put him yeah, in but position. I'm happy. I'm happy with him. I'm happy with him not seeing yellow because he tried to save. Him. I, I would have. I would have think Burgess deserved. The, 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 there are plenty of people this year who've bad people in that position and not put them on the floor, and other people have helped save them. What well, did what did Burgess do? A, a thing that's worse. I think he definitely did. I think dropping your elbow on somebody, defenceless player, even if he's not potentially knocked out, dropping your elbows onto a defenceless player who's been tackled, is one of the worst acts in rugby league. On elbow to head. Just point out he could drop if he drops Farrell there, Farrell could break his neck. Well, yeah, but he didn't drop him, did he? he definitely would have gone for yellow. He has no control over that. And I actually think it's worse when it's one on one because you are in less control. The, the yeah. two and three people involved, yeah. if someone picks a leg up or whatever, there's two, three bodies holding it up. You never see a yellow card if it's two or three on one. I think the fact that it's one on one. Harry Smith at Cass. He drove him, though, didn't he? It was, it was shown to be a yellow because he wasn't told horizontal, but he drove him. I'm Ma- okay. I with think Mackie Lewis's was worse than that. I, I, I probably was, but I. I'm okay with I'm it. I'm okay with it being a yellow looking at the result now. I'm okay with it. But not, I just think... I'm okay with it not being a yellow. I, I think you should punish people like Burgess. Right, let's move on from that. Obviously, Kieran kicks that, makes it nine points to two, meaning they, they, they need two tries. Wigan blue two. Mm. Hull KR, you could say blue two, or, or Wigan defended them really, really well. I don't think they, they were guilt edge chances like ours, though. No. Uh, I'm going to start off with, with the two Wigan uh, missed chances. First mm. one, Jake Wardle. Field does so well. Very similar to the try he had set up last grand final where he gets on the outside of the winger, threw the ball uh, back into Wardle. Uh, this time, though, Ryan Hall talked about how good he was. I just wish he'd gone himself. Uh, he did the right thing passing. I, I, just wish, on the outside. I just wish Field backed himself and beat mm. Evels in the corner. Mm. I think he probably does. But to be fair, you've got a back wall to score. I think so, yeah. And I just yeah, think he yeah. just hits the floor funny and it just his arm yeah, sticks, ball pops out. That was at the point where the weather just took a turf for the worst and we were seeing the pouring down the air and nailstone and everything. And he didn't slide, did we he? talked about it. No, he kind of bounces off the floor, doesn't he? Yeah. The ball kind I think of his comes elbow up gets as, stuck in the ground. It's like the point of the ball is, is, is below his yeah. arm and as it hits the floor, it just bounces almost yeah. up and comes out and... And we obviously had no idea about that because we were behind the play. Yeah, we didn't see it. We, we were convinced it was a try. Was a try. We were just waiting to point to the floor. And he... yeah. And you look back at it now on the replay, Waddle knew. Yeah, yeah he we put his head down we disappointed. Know, didn't we? No. He deserved the try. He's, played, he's been fantastic. I mean, Jay so Field was celebrating the and he was a lot closer than we were. <laughs> yeah. Jay and he deserved it. He's been the best centre in the comp, do you know what I mean? By but far. And, and he did deserve it. And Jay, you know what? Jay Field deserved that try. He did. Because is. is now the time I want to talk about Jeffield. Yeah, he was it. absolutely everywhere. It was like yeah. there was three of him on the field, and I spoke about Jeffield before. And and I almost think he doesn't get enough credit for what he does. Dirty work, and French does dirty work as well. But these two get credit for attacking Fleur, mm. and Field is so much more than that. Yeah, so much more. There's times where Jeffield just says, "I'm not going to let you score." Mm. Where he chases down Bachelor. Yeah. I'm not going to let you score. Where he f- throws himself into Ryan Hall. It, it, it's just brilliant. Mm. And these are not even like one on one try savers where he's chasing somebody down or he's putting somebody in touch. These are actual hard tackles to make. Tough yards. 
He sprints everywhere. No. He's always on option. He's always engaging defenders. He's always out the back. His engine's so impressive to move incredible. around the field and be everywhere. And it's his organisation as well. Yeah. We defense. spoke about that last week, didn't we? His organisational skills. I just want to say to that, obviously there's, there's always the talk about field off French at fullback. I think the big thing that Field has over French is that engine. And mm. French's is good, but Field's is ridiculous. He is everywhere, every play. And I think at fullback is where you see the best. Okay. I don't think French being at six or one really affects how much I we see of him. I completely agree. Mm. There, was a, there was an incident in the game against Lee where he made a tackle on the left hand side, mm. then made a tackle in the centre of the field, and then made a tackle back on the left hand side. He made three tackles where he ran round everyone and got there. There the amount of times we see a field... There's not many fullbacks that even try that. They make a play on the right-hand side. Again, this was in the league game. Kieran got tackled. He never got the ball field. But then he got on his bike, got all the way around to the other side of the field and put Marshall in. I'm kind of glad he's not being talked about as like yeah. super try scorer anymore. Yeah. I'm kind of glad he's talked about as like Bevan French's sidekick now. Yeah. Because mm. that's, that's good for us. But I also think... Every single decision Jay Field makes, every single move he makes, benefits the team. Yeah. And we always talk about forwards working hard for the team. We don't often talk about fullbacks working hard for the team, do we? Hmm. But I think he, he, every single thing he does is for his team over self. And I don't know if he always had that attitude. I don't know. But now every single thing he does is team over self. Yeah. Perfectly defines that that message from Kevin Sinfield about team over self every time. Yeah, because Jayfield is is one of our best players, and the reason he's one of our best players is because he is not catching the eye as much for the fan. He's catching the eye of the defenders. Yeah, but he's not catching the eye as much with the he's ball. He's going to be catching the eye of. I don't mean this in a a nasty way to anybody. But I think it's easy because he's not doing those, you know, go back to Salford a couple of seasons ago in the last minute, he throws the drum and he breaks through mm-hmm. and does a full length for the field trip. He's not doing as many of them now. And maybe then people go, oh, he's had a quiet season. But if you maybe if you've watched Rugby for a long time, you've played the game, the coaches at Wigan, his teammates will all be appreciating what he's doing. They, they don't think he's having a quiet season because he's not doing 100 metre tries and 80 metre mm-hmm. breaks and whatever. They know how important, like you said, the matter what you described as the dirty work. They'll, you, you, your neutral fan might miss that you know if you're only been up to a long t- rugby a long time you might watch a bit French and go yeah feels having a quiet season for his normal standards but if you know what kind of you've been watching it a long time you know how important that work is and also if, like you, if, does if you watch team. Wigan week in week out like we do you you kind of get a bit more of a picture of that yeah you you do and, and it's different at the games you see a lot more dirty work at the games yeah, so you yeah. don't tend to see the dirty work on the camera so I think obviously he must rack up the most kilometres yeah, of any of our players, he must do. But he's always on the move. Mm. So, he puts a, he puts a shift in every game. Um, he does. What was I going to say? Um, yeah, I think I think Jay Field has been incredible this season mm. when he's played. Yeah. He's been incredible, and and that 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 bachelor tackle you talk about mm. was about two minutes left. I want to say yeah, maybe, maybe three or four minutes left. That's when I thought we'd done it. That that sums up the work that he does. Absolutely. If you want a clip, you can forget all the fancy tries he scored. Mm. The highlights and whatever. He tries to put Ryan Hall in touch. The ball comes back inside. He sprints back inside and tackles Bachelor from behind. Mm. You will not see, and I'm going to say this, you're not going to see any fullback in this country do that. No. no. The other try that we're getting, may have blew, Liam Marshall. Bit of a yeah. scrappy one. Jake Wardle gets on the ball. Just lifts it up to Liam Marshall. Yeah. Who drops it cold? I don't. It, we were on advantage here, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. That's why we didn't get the ball back. We played advantage because they knocked on and then we we uh, we lost it in this case. I, I think having seen Marshall this year, you've got to imagine he's gone and he's yeah. under the sticks. No one's catching him because because uh, Budgie's on the floor. Isn't there it? is a player coming across, but I imagine him. Marshall's going to score based on how he's done this year. We know what his interception is. His drop balls. He 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 has just given everybody a clean pair of heels this year. And even if he doesn't score, he gets us right up the pitch, and we probably score off the back of it because that breaks their hearts. Then doesn't it? If we get right up the pitch there. Yeah. As it was, we give him another chance. 
another two um, track savers. First one. Heading towards touch, I think it was Hall. Heading towards touch, might have been Broadbent. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head now. Um, well, the ball comes back inside to prevent it going out. I want to just mention Field again. It does so well here to not just dive on the ball. Because the temptation is to grab the ball and stop the play. He actually allows uh, the KR player to pick it up and then gets pushed into touch. So we get the ball back. I think that's just such a minor detail. He could easily dive on it, panic, dive on it. They push him into touch. It's six again. And mm. they get another set on our line. That weight and that pause from field, just to allow them to pick it up and get tackled, we get the ball back and it releases a little bit of pressure. The second one, ball gets thrown back inside and it lands to Bevan, doesn't it? Bevan sets off, makes about 10, oh, 15 yeah. metres. Um, and I love that. <laughs> it was mad. I, I jumped up and started, I was thinking we'd scored when he got going on his bike and he starts running. But moments like that win your finals. Yeah. Try savers win you. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. I mean, we said it last week, didn't we? Defensive moments. We had a moment there with Bevan. We had a we had a lot of defensive moments. We had a moment with Jay Field where he set one up and we didn't finish it. We had a moment with Marshall where he kicked out for himself. Yeah. So we made three moments and the rest was all defence. Yeah, it was. And you know what? If we needed to, I'm sure we'd have tried some more mm. and made some more moments because Bevan can just create that. Yeah, he does. Jay can just create that. He creates time and space himself. We'd, we'd hit and Semba as lead runner so many times in the first half. Yeah. That, that I was starting to think, right, now's your chance to give it to Jay. Yeah. Now's your chance to give it to Jay. And we, we actually didn't try it yeah. because we were winning. If we weren't winning, so by two scores, I bet we can't stay out. Yeah, we hit field at the back mm-hmm. a bit more. Because we had drawn them in with hitting and Semba every time. Yeah. Matty's chopped about Jay Field. Can I talk about my man for a bit? Yeah. yeah. Last, I want to say 20 minutes? Definitely 10 15. Um, Harry Smith. Oh. I think, especially, I mean, all games before, kicking the drop goal, right decision, bossing us around the park. Those His general really long kicking game, but especially in the closing stage of this game, this was just prime organising number seven play. Mm. If they touch with kicks, we need to find touch and just take a bit of sting out of the game, slow it back down, give Wigan time to set a defensive line up for a controlled restart, not giving Hulk any chance to make any quick breaks or attack from their own half with momentum and quick play of the balls. Um, it, it, it just seemed like he made the right decision every time. Mm. And I just remember made. with people around us, he, 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 it was one of, I think he did it multiple times, but on the last one, he kicked and it just rolled over, bounced and rolled over into the um, in touch. And I was saying to the people around us because I was already raving about it. I just went, "That's Harry Smith again." Mm. I said, "He's just," I said, "He's just running yep. this game and seeing yep. it through to the end." Yep. And he made all the right decisions, ending with balls in touch, slowing the game, taking the sting out of it down. And I was like, "This is so professional, Dude. such a professional seven performance." In that entire game. He made one bad kick. It was in yeah. the first half, and he sort of didn't get it and hit it to Evels on the full. Yeah. And we didn't get any distance mm. from it. And I remember looking at him, and he was disappointed in himself. Mm. Like he jumped up and whatever, and then sprinted up to the line to try and get one of the first up there to try and make up for his error. Yeah. And then he just absolutely nailed everything else. I think he gets a bit of stick, Harry. Um, maybe because he's, you know, he's a local player and he's not what everyone wants to see. At seven, but he's certainly what I want to see. And if you think about it, I I often when I'm trying to gauge how good a player is, I listen to their teammates and yeah. I listen to their coaches and the, and just off the top of my head now, thinking about people who've singled out Harry Smith for praise about this game, just off the top of my head, I remember Chris Rudlinski, yeah, Matty Pete, Bevan French, Sam Tompkins, George Williams. Um, that's just off the top of my head, who've praised him. Nathan Cleary, yeah, praised him, and you think. You know what? They probably know the stuff, them lot. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and it, the players always talk about Harry Smith controlling it. They always talk about, Nashi always calls him the general, we always call him mm. the general. 
the players always talk about Harry Smith controlling the game. And yes, the forwards need to give him a chance to control the game. And yes, Bevan and Jay need to play off the back of those forwards and give Harry space to do what he does. But Harry Smith organising us, there's no man I'd rather have. Yeah. And I've said it again. I, I just wouldn't change anybody in our team. And that's you know yeah. that that's not just because they've won four trophies. That's because I genuinely do think we've built a proper squad here that, that do it for each other. And Harry, is that's his job. Yeah. And yeah, he's not as good when he's not got Bevan and he's not got Jay. And he's not got Brad O'Neill. You know, he's not going to be. Yeah. He's not going to be. But add French, add Field, add Farrell back into the team. And all of a sudden he looks like a much better player because he can do his job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he is so good at doing his job. I think people forget. He, you know, he, he gets a lot of stick because he has had the odd bad performance here. With the, let's not forget, he came into this squad during Adrian Lamb's time. Yeah. When we had a bit of an injury crisis, we had no Tommy Lulawai. Jackson Hastings was playing like full-back, if you remember. So. Yeah. And he was such a young lad then. He shouldn't have played that many games that no, season. No, he shouldn't, really. Everyone was saying he's burned out, he's a young lad. He should have been doing the Jack Farman role that Jack Farman does now. Comes in, and Jack plays Farman will probably a couple, do next year. and he'll probably do next year. Comes in, plays a couple, plays, you know, I guess he gets called and if there's injuries and we need him. We've got it right he's, with he's, him. He's earned his stripes with London and plays so, like you know that. I just thought about He's got burned out, but he's... Boston, he, isn't it? What Jack Farman's going to do next year, Harry Smith probably only got to do in 2022 when Custom Lulawai played. Mm. Yeah. For two seasons before that, he'd basically been playing at the half. Mm. He was Wigan's number seven. He might not have had the number seven on his back, but he was Wigan's number seven. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And, and I think we've got it right with Farman. Mm. And again, there's people always calling for Farman to replace Smith full time. Mm. But I think we've got it right with Farman. I know yeah. you're laughing about that, but people do genuinely I think know. that. And, and I just think Smith's so important to how we play that you can't leave him out well, that's the thing that, then Farriman does a bad game at Warrington at all and people jump on him and it's like yeah but he will is a young lad yes, he, he's yes. not meant to be there every week he comes in and you build him up you yeah. know and, and that's what you do you he comes into the side you know and Brad O'Neill's in the side and Farrell's in the side and French and Field yeah. all these pros yeah the side they're he came into you know, they're going to protect him I'm gonna say I just I just like lip 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 said it to you, Matty, while while you're talking on this. It's because what he does is boring. Mm. It's the side of the game that isn't catchy. And it, that, that's why people aren't calling Jay Field as uh, they they're not as impressed with Jay Field as they had been. Yeah. Because it's it's the, the repeat sets. Doing tough stuff, being mm. afraid to be not being afraid to be boring. Five and five, time and time again. He didn't actually put many of these kicks in, really, in this game. But he was just dropping it on Evels, dropping it on Burgess. It's interesting. Not, not letting him get a head start. Let's get our kick chase down though. It's interesting Bevan never really gets credit for doing the hard yards, mm. doing the tough tackles. Yeah. Jay, made, so I, I know we said we'll do stats later. French made 31 tackles. I'm not surprised. And not one person mm. has mentioned... His defence. His defence. He, he, he's an excellent defender. Mm. We spoke about his defence all year, haven't mm. we? The one time they do is when he put that big shot on Cassiano... Or he puts a big shot on someone and or he stops, tries, stops he a big try crossover over against Harry Newman. Yeah, it's the, it's the doing it twenty five times a game. It's yeah. impressive. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's the reason forwards don't get the credit that they deserve. Yeah. If we're being brutally honest, mm. and I, I feel like we're going to end up going on to stacks here. But I mean, we're going to talk about forwards in a bit, but yeah. we're still on backs at the minute because <laughs> we're going to take this long talking about the whole team because they all played well. Mm. Yeah, the 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 backs, Liam Marshall and Miski do not get the credit for probably. I'm almost less bothered about the try scoring. It's the 150 metres they make every game. Mm. Abbas Miski, that's all people asking for Eckersley to play. No, I, I, I love Zach Eckersley. I think he's going to be a really top player. But he can't make 150 metres week after week after week after week because he's not physically ready yet. Miski got us out of jail a few times in this game. So many times. You know, with his yardage, which we have spoke about already. Mar- we spoke Marshall about does it. We spoke about Kieran, we spoke about Miski. Marshall Wardle. Wardle defensively picks the right man 99 times out of 100 let's let's go up front Lewis let's talk about some forwards do you reckon let's, let's talk about some grunts up front who called them the Bruce oh, brothers oh I like that grunt up front have you have you yeah. prepped that the or? grunt up front no I, is that not a John Keith saying or maybe Brian Noble someone says grunt up front it might be Brian Noble but yeah grunt up front's good isn't it? but the Bruce brothers 
uh, have, have, heard, have heard Ellison Thompson, the yeah. Bruce brothers. Just point out with them three, first of all, the time that they were on the field. Yeah. yeah. Cade Ellis did 80 minutes. Of course. If there's a big game, Cade's doing 80. Big game Cade. Big game Cade and 80 minutes Ellis. Big game. The, the Luke Thompson. 76 or 74, was it? Something do you like know that. What, do you know what I looked at today? The comments on Twitter about when Luke Thompson signed. <laughs> oh, because it was this time last year. It was around this time last year. Just after the final. Some of the comments it, reading about left. Wigan will be disappointed having that much money tied up for four years for someone who's injured. He's passed his best. He's this, he's that. The best My one I saw was from a Saints player. Are you ready? Um, our players break records. Yours break tendons or tear tendons or something. Like, yeah. But Luke Thompson's just broken a load of records mm. this year. Mm. He's won four trophies in the same year. Uh, the, the, and Saints have been complaining about injuries. Yeah. And, again... I remember watching St. Anthony's going back from Huddersfield and the videos about them singing about Luke Thompson. Did Don't you know they had some injuries one. this year? St. Helens. They, they, they did well to get on with that without mm. mentioning the injuries at all. You know, you know we've done really well not to have a single injury this year. We've not had any injuries. I mean, it's great mm. to our physio department that we just we just chose to leave Willie Iser, Brad O'Neill, Bevan French, Jay Hill, Liam Farrell. We just chose to leave all these guys out. Mm. Mm. Sam Walters for 10 weeks. Yeah, we just, we just decided eat. we didn't need them. It's not fair on the rest of the league, so... Yeah, we had no injuries. Well done to the strength and conditioners, well done to the physios, well done to the players. I just... But he was a phenomenal signing. And... Yeah. Oh, ridiculous. Well, I'm, I'm ridiculous. Just, I feel changed bad. his game as well. I don't remember him doing that with Saints. No. I Did always, it? I always Have I got it wrong? I, I think, he was, always this... a, I think you know, he was always a hard worker. He was, don't get me wrong, but I remember him doing maybe 20, 25 minutes then being rotated yeah, in yeah. and half. I don't remember him doing that all I, I do think they had and four just coming forwards. off maybe. I think they had four forwards that, that rotated pretty well. Knowles, Lees, uh, Wormsley, them two, and then a bit of Parsi. And, and Thompson. Uh, they, they had a bit of balance, a bit more. They still used to bring uh, yeah. McCarthy Skarsbrook off bench. Yes, yeah, would be a 70 plus minute prop. You don't get that nowadays. But, not really. You don't get that. You know, we went back in the day there with Peacocks and Fieldens who do 80 minute props, you know what I mean? Mm. They're not yeah. really thinking today's game. No, not, well, not in this calls. country anyway. No. So, d- let, let's just dive into some of these stats. The two starting props, Havard and Thompson. Havard played probably 60 minutes. Came off for a little bit for, for Mago yeah. and Dupree. Yeah. Um, made 52 tackles and 80 metres. Chuff for him. Absolutely delighted. Obviously, the last year it didn't go his way. Mm. Where we brought him back, and he mm. had to go off after ten minutes with the, the hamstring injury. Oh, he didn't miss the start of the season, did he, with his injury? And oh, yeah, of course, he missed the first. So he his first game back was actually away at Craven Park. So that must be round six. No, later than that. Later than that, I'll look up what round it was. Mm. But he didn't. He didn't actually start playing until Craven Park away, which was the second defeat. Mm. I think he's going to be made out of it. Maybe because of Thompson and Mago like taking the highlight of our forwards. Do you think he's kind of going under the radar a little bit? For I can't believe the amount of opposition fans. Eleven. He missed ten games. He missed ten games. Mm. He didn't. Though. Plus preseason. He had any injuries? Preseason and the first ten games, including World Cup Challenge and first Challenge Cup round. So he came back round nine. Sorry, Lewis. You talk about Havard going under the radar. Yeah, I'm saying with obviously Thompson's taking obviously mm. the lamb like for very good reasons. Mago's kind of taken kind of Sky, Sky Sports man of the match and just had a bit of a highlight reel of him I, I think leaving Hav- bodies on the floor. Do you think Havard's going a bit kind the, of under the radar? Maybe. The thing for me with Havard is, is, is he isn't a Mago. He's not going to run all the top no, of no, he's not. But what he does, and I, I will go out on a limb and say this: I don't think there's a better prop in Super League at doing what Havard does. But get into the line and just shimmy in. Find his front. Get on his front. Get on his front. Get his front play and watch. I reckon most of the time it's him or Thompson that line us up on a post. Mm. Mm. And if you're in the right position, at least does a lot going to first receiver. He does. I think Havard is the one that will just shimmy to get us onto a post. Get, in, get on his front. Quick play the ball. We're at you. It's interesting, isn't it? Because if, if I asked Lewis who his favourite forward is, I think he'd say Luke Thompson. And if I asked you, I think you'd say Cade Ellis. Mm. But if you asked me, I'd say Ethan Havard. Mm. And those are obviously the big three. We all love all three. I don't three think of them. any of them are wrong. No, but I think I think we're all right. You know what I mean? Yeah. We all just like something a bit different now. But you know, forwards, and they, they complement each other well. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're a perfect from three. They're a perfect three. I'm just having a look actually how old Ethan is. 
because he only, he's played his 100th game. He's had a few yeah. injuries. He's He turns 24 this month. Yeah. So he's got another two, three years before we're even talking about him being at his peak. Mm. Mm. He's, he's four years behind Thompson. He's four or five years behind Cade Ellis in terms mm. of age. He's a phenomenal But talent. he probably played as much as Ellis. Because in the NRL, they, they don't tend to throw forwards in young. Yeah, Ellis, throw Ellis has had three pretty uninjury, uh, yeah, I bet, I unaffected bet, injuries. I bet so he must be near, must near 80 Wigan games. Yeah, yeah, he probably, yeah, he probably is. So I'll probably Minus see all the ones where he was headbutting people for yeah, but, that brief spell. He's got that out of his gear. Partner, uh, Luke Thompson, 48 tackles and 145 metres. Mm. I mean, what more can you say about Thompson that we've not already said? He's, he's a machine, isn't he? I, you know what game always stands out to me? We played Salford at Salford the second time, you know, and it belted it down. Oh, yeah. And he, we were on top, and they brought him off early. And he genuinely seemed disappointed. And then for the entire rest of the first half, and the start <laughs> of the second half, we well, sat on exercise bike. <laughs> and it, it started a bit of a joke with the, the lads that we got to the rugby, is that, oh, he's come off early, he's going to have to go and do an half marathon to pay up for it or whatever. Mm. But he just never stops. It's ridiculous. Well, there, was a, there was a funny moment in the in the sheds after mm. the game. You seen this, where they were doing a dance or singing a song or something, and Matty Pete said Luke Thompson didn't have any rhythm. There was no rhythm in his hips. There was no movement in his hips when he was dancing. And he basically said, "Well, if you brought me off a bit earlier, maybe I'd be dancing a bit better." <laughs> it's there through the middle of the park in a grand final. Um, like that no wonder I'm not dancing very well. So I think. He, he is a really, really good big minute prop. Yeah, he's an athlete. Too. I was always spoke about before. Absolute athlete to be that big, that strong, that powerful, that quick, but have this stamina and cardio to go for seventy four minutes. I don't actually get. I, I would love to have a strength and conditioning coach on here and say, actually, how do you actually train someone to do that? Mm. To put that much muscle on, to be that big, that strong, that powerful, and that fit, but also that fit and have that much cardiovascular endurance. How do you actually train for that? Um, do you know why they bring these rules in about minutes? That's a good question. This is, it is. I, I would love to dive into like the sports science of it. It's going to be really interesting this because in I can't remember if it's next year or the year after. Don't the rules come in about how long you can play? Well, they're reviewing that, but it's meant to come in next year. So that would be interesting because people like him. Minute limit. That's what it's got. I just think that could be so interesting because it actually negates the advantage of of having these, and it will probably affect players like Mago. Front rowers, because um, you can't carry a prop on the bench. Who does fifteen to counteract that? Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see the balance of that. But um, you just have yeah. to have more weeks off. That's why you need more. You'll need more props in your yeah. squad because you'll have to just give them weeks off because mm. you can't. You know. Yeah. yeah. Now, now I'm going to move on to the back rowers. Start off with a younger lad, junior in December. He was off for fifteen minutes. Yeah. His HIA doing his head test. Um. Passing his head test. Doing the months of the year backwards or whatever they ask you in a head test. I'd love mm. to actually do one. How fun would that be? Yeah. That can be your job. You can do that when you interview the strength and conditioning exactly. person. You can do a head test. He doesn't know the, day, the months forward. But Junior. I do. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> um, December, 24 tackles, 100 metres. Yeah. You know what? I thought, I thought they probably dealt with him the best that any side has done. In but his really, relatively they, short career. They showed him respect. You have to. But, but he created space elsewhere. Mm. And he created issues. Well, you have to show him respect now. Mm. He's a genuine threat. And if he plays for mm. England, some more ought to show him respect. Yeah. He's a genuine threat. And then I mean Wellesby will be out the back. And in absolute frenzy for Wellesby, yeah. won't it? Oh, yeah. In those games, you'd imagine. Well, potentially that, that left side could be the same left side for England. Well, it depends where he plays. He play. He'll probably play. Do you think he'll play with Pierce Paul? Who do you think? Do you Pierce think he'll Paul play? Pierce Paul the right, doesn't he? Bateman. He likes the right side. Both of them prefer the right hand side. Mm. So if December plays, Smith, I would suspect would be on the left side. Wardle and Marshall. They probably want to keep that partnership. Who else has he got in the squad? Has he picked Bateman in the squad? I don't know. I, can't, I was I looking can't at it earlier. Um, but I'm going to move on to the captain. Obviously, missed out the week before through illness. Sam Walters came in and did a, a brilliant job. 53 tackles alongside Bevan French's 31. They were targeted 
Maybe because he didn't play last week. I don't, I don't know why you would target Liam Farrell defensively because he is ridiculous. Maybe it's down to the strength of Mikey Lewis and um, Tanganoa coming on on the, on the left side, potentially. But he just does everything so well. Mm. I can't remember the last time I remember Liam Farrell having a bad game. Well, that's why he's the captain, isn't he? He leads from example. You get an 8 out of 10 every week, mm. don't you? Mm. He leads he's with his actions brilliant. on the field, doesn't he? Yeah, he's just brilliant. Yeah. I'm just looking at what I'm looking at what second rows he's picked. Bateman, he has picked Bateman. Um he's picked another second row. McMeekin he's a bit of a second row, isn't he? He's picked a lot of props. Maybe Kai Pierce Ka- Paul wasn't meant to play, was he? Pierce Paul is in the squad. Is he? Um and Ensemba's in the squad. So of actual second rowers, you've only really got Ensemba, Pierce Paul, and Bateman, who actually play there week in, week out. You've got McMeekin who can play there. And you've got probably Smithies who can play there. Aside from that, you know, he's picked a lot of props. So I'm hitting that back row, Kai Pierce, Paul and Junior December. Yeah. You know, that's probably the one thing we've not seen from December. Him being used at kicks. No, no, we've not but, seen that. But with him being on the left-hand side, it's a bit difficult to get a cross-field kick to him. Yeah, you can still do it. What, what you... I mean is it was usually Smith going for Pierce, Paul and Pierce, Paul tapping back to French. Yeah, yeah. With French kicking, you possibly not got a great as good a kicker as Smith. Unless you put you know, you couldn't have Smith float. Yeah, um, might want to bet for winning over half backs as well when he just kicks. Yeah, yeah. When you got eight and power like that, well, on both we sides of the field. We didn't talk about that. Where Smith chipped over the top for him. Yes, and it backs, but and 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 Semba caught it. Now and Semba catches that clean. He's a chance of running over Evels. No. If it's somebody else, he, it's a catch and pass. You know, if it's Lehman or French or one of those guys who's got good hands, it catches and passes. And who was on his shoulder? Was it Lehman on his shoulder? Might have been Lehman. I don't Lehman remember who was on his shoulder. Whoever it was on his shoulder was in for a try. Um, a, a walking try. But yeah, I like that chip and chase from Smith mm. for Ensemble. Yeah. And he even put a kick in in this game. Yeah. Which he did against Lee. Mm. I think you like for such a big guy to start when they're kicking. Last one. Of the of the of the starting five. Kate Ellis. Mm. I I love him. The king. For someone who was not really given the credit in his first season, second season, he had his few disciplinary issues, he, he had the headbutt on yeah. Ratchford. We liked him as a prop. Yeah. To turn into this ball playing thirteen, mm. who looks like he's played that role for the last fifteen years of his yes. life. Yes, and I'm not saying he's as good as Isaiah York doing it, but you wouldn't watch him and go, "Oh, he's considerably worse." The meters, the hard work. He is someone who gets better in big games. Yeah, I think in in quieter games he can often throw an offload that's not needed and. Maybe make up a mistake or whatever. But. I think he's added the offload into his game more recently. Mm. I remember him offloading in the Challenge Cup final to get Smith in mm. for a try. And that was like, what a big deal, kid. Ellis just offloaded. Mm. I just I just think sometimes in quieter games, less pressure games, you can make a silly mistake or, or drop a silly ball. Maybe, but then but, everyone can do that. But I big think. games, he is almost perfect. He, he, he is a brilliant, brilliant loose forward. 56 tackles, just short of 100 metres. Mm. Carrying. What did he do wrong in this game? I feel like I remember him throwing a ball that got intercepted. Oh, no, I was I in the league game. I, I was in the league game, I, sorry, no. I don't, he did make, I don't remember him making a mistake in this game. No. no. I don't remember him doing anything wrong. I don't think many did, to be fair. No, true. We were very mistake free. Mm-hmm. We were safe. Yeah. Because we played with a lead. Yeah. Now, let's talk about the two nines. I want to give a bit of credit to Tom Forber. It, it's very difficult, or very easy to forget, sorry. Um, that we haven't got Brad O'Neill. That we haven't got Brad O'Neill. But just to talk about what happened to Tom Forber, because there's not been a lot mentioned. 
he started the season out on loan. Hmm. He then had to overcome a pretty bad injury himself. Do you not remember going towards Magic and we were saying, we're just waiting for Forbes to get back fit so Lehman doesn't have to play 80 yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was back for Magic, wasn't he? Um, or just before? I think he came in the game after Magic. Or was it the game after Magic? Yeah, I, think I don't he think might... he was fit for Magic. It was around Magic time. Though. Um, he's never really had a run of first team games before that. I think he might have played one, uh, maybe two. No, he's played a few games, but not, not in, in a run. And like then the back end of the season, he's played six or seven games back to back. He's had his yeah. ups and downs in that. He had a, he had, I remember at home, I think he had a pretty poor game at home once where his passing was a little bit off and whatever. But he really bounced back. He put a good 30 minutes in this spell, came on just after half time. I think for him, that game at Catalan, where he scored the try, was a big deal for him. Got him, got his confidence. He's got a first try. Um, he's start, you know, he, he's coming to the team to replace Brad O'Neill. He's finally fit. He'll have been wanting to make a mark. I actually think of the three nines we've got, his distribution is the best. I think his distribution from nine is the best, and I think when he comes onto the pitch, mm-hmm. it's very different to Lehman. He's very different to O'Neill. I wish we had rugby union style benches so we could have all three, because mm. sometimes the game might dictate. Yeah, which one comes up? Because I think a rugby union style bench would suit us a bit more than it would suit some other teams. Maybe I'm being a bit greedy by asking for that. Um, but I think when Forber comes on, his distribution is perfect. And it is in Ellis's hands, and it is in Smith's hands, and it is in French's hands, perfect. Mm. And not to say Lehman and O'Neill are bad at that. They are much better than him at other things. One thing we've started doing with our nines is a nice wide pass off the hook, which yes. I like. And it's normally going to Ellis, there'll be like a prop on the inside, and it's about a 10 metre ball, 50 metre ball. That you just need accuracy finds for Ellis that. at first receiver, and he's got someone on the inside of him, or he's got bodies in motion on the outside of him, which is normally because it's a first receiver and either. And starts playing that ball, playing 13 rule, but it comes off a nice wide pass off the rock and mm. it opens us up, that moves teams about a little bit and just disrupts them. And it's a nice little play. That you one. need to be really accurate to make that. Yeah, you need and, to have good nice. And Farber is really accurate with his passing. And I think mm. he's, he, you know, he's not let anybody down defensively either, has he? No. No, no he's been very good defensively. He's been good defensively, not letting anybody down. I think he deserved this for the role he's played in getting us the League Leader Shield and the role he's played in getting us to this final. He deserved the chance at Old Trafford and he stood up. Yeah. And he played well. Mm. And you know what? For a bench nine, you didn't notice him too much, which mm. is probably a good thing. Yeah, you didn't notice a change. If you're Tom Ford, but you don't want to be noticed, mm. you want to just be get the team around the park and make your tackles. Yeah. And he did both those things. 100%. He, that's why he's different to Lehman. Lehman, he, he's going to catch the eye. Mm. We're just under that nature of his game. Forber, he is carrying the piano I always say carry the piano for the artist to play he's a tough lad yeah. Very oh yeah he's defense. a tough he's a tough defender yeah, yeah he's a tough defender Lehman he had a difficult start to his career just in terms of played at Cass walked off at Castleford in that first game in a boot mm-hmm. managed to play in Penrith but I think he only got 15 minutes on the field before yes. he went off yeah. after his try yeah, then he was yeah. out for a while then he came back in partnership with O'Neill and it was a little bit difficult for him trying to build them relationships up and, and, and style of play. Mm. Then he had to change and be an 80-minute nine. Then he's been a starting nine and a, a, had to be more controlled than, than possibly what we expected of him. Mm. I think he's been phenomenal to start with. What do you think his best role is? I still think his best role is coming on after half an hour. Yeah, so do I. Which is usually how it goes with a, with a player like Cruz Lehman. Yeah. What do you think? Come on after half yeah, an hour. I think so. Do the last 15 minutes in the second half. Yeah. Mm. Something so. like that. I find it weird. I do want to mention this because I've just thought about it. But obviously O'Neill and, and Lehman usually end up with O'Neill doing 20, Lehman doing 20 before half time and 20 after and O'Neill coming back on. That's usually the way. But have you noticed a couple of teams like Hull KR, like Warrington have done this? To have the the more creative one on at the start, so that he's on at the end if you need points. Yeah, Lytton should have been uh, in more in this game. I think. Yeah, he he struggled to get into the game. He should have been on more. He should have had more minutes. Yeah. Um. Right. Should we? I think that wraps it up. Really. 
as in terms of the game. Yeah, you think? I think so. I think there's quite a bit to talk about, though. Mm. It's going to be a long episode, this, to talk about one game. It is a very long episode already. Uh, it's probably longer than most of our episodes already. Who cares? No, I don't. We've won a grand final. Um, should we talk about it? Liam Farrell, he looks really good picking that trophy. <laughs> yeah. I could get used to seeing Liam Farrell picking up trophies. I already am used to seeing Liam Farrell picking up. He's picked up seven in three years. Yeah. And he's picked up the last six. So I am used to seeing Liam Farrell pick up trophies. Yeah. Um, remarkable. Yeah. Remarkable, remarkable season. We will not see the like of it again, probably. Um, play, played 34. Won 29. Lost five. And at various points through this season, people have written us off. Yeah. And the world's been caving in. Losing away at Leeds, that was the worst thing ever. You know, we were we were going downhill. We were never going to win anything. It was Harry Smith getting a red card as the worst half back in Super League in a poor side. Losing away at Hull. Losing away at Hull and then at Warrington, getting beat by Warrington at home the week after. That was the end of the season. So, to, to lose five games all year when we lost the league on, on Good Friday. Yeah. We lost the league at home to Warrington. We lost the league away at Craven Park and away at Headingley. So we've lost the league four times and still won it. Yeah. And we've only lost five games. And, and 29 wins and five losses is ridiculous in any sport. Yeah. And in all competitions, when you factor in that you've played Penrith and you, you've gone to the final of every competition, it is a ridiculous, ridiculous season. Yeah. And we're not taking it for granted. We're going to enjoy it over the next few months. But do you think this team are finished? No. no. Not a chance are they finished. Well, I, I got corrected uh, the other day. Saints actually won six trophies in a row. Oh, did they? We're going to need one more minimum to hold the record. Really? And I think they're going for that. Challenge Cup. It should be the World Challenge. But yeah, it won't be, will it? It'll be the Challenge Cup. Uh, Penrith don't want to play Wigan. I know they've lost four in a row, but we haven't won back to back cups for a while. For a long, long time. Since the nineties, I think. For a long, long time. Get us yeah. yeah. What? We have to win. What we a team what a team. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I, like you said, is this team finished. I think this could actually be the start of a bit of a dynasty. Um a bit like the Saints doing the four in a row. We've gone back to back. Yeah. With obviously trophies in between those as well, so and I do I think we've, we've we've seen a lot of these players announced on on extension deals, which mm. I know doesn't mean necessarily secured. They can go average, average age twenty six. We've recruited well. It's a very young team. I'm sure there's going to be more recruitment to come in and more academy lads who are going to come in and impress us. Um, we've also so yeah, not, I think I think we've we not just won the league back to back. We've been undisputed champions back to back I like that that phrase yeah. league leaders winners and grand final winners yeah. back to back yeah I mean what a team this has been a brilliant team I mean doing this grand slam already creates a bit of a dynasty for this team in itself it writes them into the history book yeah it does it's just, but I think there's more to come I think there's more to come I'm going to say you might never see this happen again I don't think you will I don't think we'll, we'll play for four trophies next year so we can't win them all but I do think that there's going to be a big challenge because you can't win them all every year. Mm. So I do think there's going to be a big challenge when that happens and when we don't win one, how do the fan base, how do the players, how do the coaches react? I'm sure it'll be in the right way. Yeah. I should be in, it'll be in the right manner. Um, how will we react to being big favourites again? We were big favourites this year, but we've handled that tag well. We're going to be favourites again, huge favourites again next year, let's be honest, for all the trophies. But there'll, there'll be a lot of good teams next year. Yeah. Again. I think so. So it, it won't be easy. No. And Definitely won't be easy. Every other team has got to up the game and try and match that level. And mm. You know what, we're going to, got to try and hit another level now. I, 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 I think there are targets. Like, how could you better this? Mm. You're all... There's always a push to improve. And you've got to 
you also got to freshen up the squad. That's what they always talk about in sport. You have to freshen up the squad. Yeah, but listen, there's a lot of players that signed this year that didn't play many games. Mm. Eckersley's going to be pushing for a starting spot. Tom Ford has got, got a contract for next year. Farman's mm. going to want more games. Sam Walters is going to want more games. Sam Walters suffered with his injury and timings and things like that. Hill, yeah, Byrne, Dupree, they're all going to be fine for more minutes. Mm. Um, Sam Essay, Tiaki Chan, they're all going to be players that want a part of this. If they have those new minute rules, we will have to use our squad more. Because mm. I feel like we've used... The same 17 for the last 10 weeks, it feels like. But I also don't think we've, like I said, we've not just got away this season with no injuries and been able to play the same 20 players. Our injuries have been long term. That's the, that's the thing I'm getting at. Yeah. We've had to use our squad. Mm. We had to discover in December. We lost Willie Iser in round uh, just after the Challenge Cup game. That was around it, uh, just before round eight. Lost him for all the season. Mike Cooper, who should have played a lot of games. Only played eight, I think. Got a, uh, an injury after the World Club Challenge. Mm. Was then out for a while, come back, got an injury, head knock. Career over. Career over. Brad O'Neill, he's not going to be back till April. No. There are players that have got stuff to prove. and I don't think there's anyone in this squad that's going to find complacency. I don't think it's something no. that the coaching staff would allow. No. I think we're we're looking forward to next season, but I think we need to enjoy this day. You like the you need to sort this up. Yeah. Realise what the squad have done and enjoy it. Yeah. I completely agree hundred percent. I think it's a really special squad. I think we'll probably do um an end of season whole season review at some point in the next couple yeah. of weeks because this is a very long episode. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we've we got to wrap the season up properly. We haven't done news, we haven't done signings, we haven't done high catches, we haven't talk, spoken about the huge game mm. on Sunday night. Hunslet against Swinton. <laughs> Massive game, big game. Uh, we've not spoken about that. So I think we'll probably come back in the next couple of weeks and do a season review. Yeah. Maybe one for Wigan and one for the rest of the teams. Yeah. We'll do a quick, quick one with the rest of the teams. Yeah. I think we'll probably do that. Before we wrap it up, what a season! What a season! Oh well, it's it's, it's, it's got the to best be, I've ever seen. It's got to be the best season we've we've ever seen. You know it's what? I, I want to ask people: Is there a season that stands out to you better than this? Twenty ten was up there, but I think when all said and done, twenty twenty four will be the best season. Um, yeah, it has to be. Just this group of players are so likable. Every, everyone in this squad has written their name in, in mm. Wigan history. Oh, ab- absolutely, of course. Of the course. likable, the marketable, the connection with the fans, with the fan village and everything. is mm. just, and Matty Pete being big on community days and open training sessions that you can go and watch and the transparency with the club and the fans. It, it is just so easy to get behind yes. Wigan Rugby League at the minute. Yes. And get involved. So easy. It is. I love this club. And you get the feeling they love us. Mm. Yeah, you do. And you don't get that everywhere. And you've not got that everywhere with this club. We'll be honest, won't we? You don't always feel like that. But right now, with the ownership we've got and with the current leadership and you know, through the last few few years with, with Ian Lanigan as leader and now with Danson, Madlinski, Brooks, you feel like the, the, the team care about the town. Team buy in. Yeah. It's class, isn't it? Oh, it's brilliant being a Wigan fan. I think that's the perfect sentence to end it on. It's brilliant being a Wigan fan. See you in the uh, season review, lads. Yeah. See you then. I'll see you soon.